I, I'm like, show me all of the anime that you have. And they're like, oh, here's the anime that our <laughs> AI thought you would like. And it's like, no. I am no, no longer show asking. Me this. <laughs> show, me, show me your inventory. We're doing an audit right now. got kind of used to like that's 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 my life with Yu-Gi-Oh it just kind of comes and goes yeah it's kind of like this podcast being an anime podcast <laughs> and we sometimes directly it start is, with Yu-Gi-Oh sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um yeah I guess that goes to the intro welcome back to another episode of the Weeb Crew I'm your host Mumi as always we got Psyotic I'm here too yeah, he's he's just been here silently, just wondering why the fuck <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Yu-Gi-Oh for 15 minutes. Uh, and we've also got your favorite shitty internet roommate, I, uh, Internet Pit Stop. Hey, uh, favorite shitty internet roommate here. So I can't rude. believe you've been upstairs this whole fucking time while we've been in this basement. You haven't even come said hi or like offered any fucking food. We're just like starving down here. <laughs> we don't want really starving. Are shitty... <laughs> Well, that's because of all the rats. <laughs> <laughs> eating, the, eating the rats. They're high. They're high in trans fats. Okay. They can't, they can't reach me. No, I'm like not. sitting on the. I'm like sitting on that. I'm on this zeal island that's on my PFP. I'm just like floating in the basement on an island. <laughs> they can't reach me. Um, yeah. So I guess for anybody that might be listening that's not familiar with your content, which I guess. There might be more of those now. I don't know. We get more people actually listening to us on fucking podcast platforms now. It's not just not just YouTube anymore. I, somehow. <laughs> I don't know how this <laughs> works. Um, but for anyone that's listening that doesn't know your stuff, uh, I guess give your a little intro spiel, maybe kind of what your content kind of is and how you got into it. Uh, I make uh, anime slash video game video essays that are sort of comedic, sort of researchable. I, it, a lot of my stuff just runs on passion and just what I love to talk about. And uh, I try to go about talking about it in a very like casual tone. And uh, the, it, it's in the name. Like when I say your favorite shitty internet roommate, that's I want that feel to come out. I want you to feel like you're just listening to a very passionate, shitty roommate who maybe doesn't clean that well, but you like hearing him talk about things. So that's that's what he does. And yeah, that's what you're here for. The, uh, I, I've always said the goal. I, I want to add, just add this because uh, I haven't been ever been asked to describe my channel, so I, I just want to add this too. The goal is to be the bonfire of the internet. That's that's kind of like I want to like make that vibe. That's kind of the vibe of the channel. The kind of like Adult Swim esque bonfire of the internet kind of thing. Would you say that's kind of like your your inspiration for making content? Is like having that kind of hub. Um, not for making content altogether, but definitely like mm -hmm. the vibe that I wanted the channel to give off. Like when I, when I set out to make a channel, I, there was another idea, but it, what it came down to was that was like, I wanted to make a, a channel that kind of felt a little bit like this bonfire, this little corner of the internet. That's why it's called that, uh, that you could just come, you know, you can rest at the bonfire for a little bit before you got to go do something else, you know, and that's that's kind of like what I've sure. been striving to do. And I think uh, kind of adding the uh, the adult swim elements because adult swim it was kind of like that for me, too. That's kind of how, how I like that, too. And that that's the kind of atmosphere I want the channel to have, because that was a big thing for me was atmosphere. I, lo I love atmosphere and adult swim was much more than just a channel. It had its own like atmosphere had its own vibe and that's kind of what i want my people to see my channel as not just a channel uh but a, a place with a vibe and an atmosphere i'm gonna be completely honest right now when you got when you said bonfire i did not think dark souls i thought like like campground like bonfire people just <laughs> sure. sitting around yeah, talking around the that. fire yeah you could do that too i I'm th i was thinking dark souls because dark souls was like kind of the the big thing that pushed me to make videos like it what playing dark souls kind of got me there but yeah i mean that works too and i don't know when you say I mean, a yeah, bonfire like in real life i just think of like those big massive ones mm -hmm. <laughs> that mm -hmm. doesn't sound very relaxing uh, <laughs> a relaxing <laughs> a dumpster giant fire burning tower. <laughs> ah. 
Let's let's all let's like all let's all gather around the the burning metal barrel with trash in it. And <laughs> the story. burning man of fucking Andy too. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I want that channel to exist now too. That'd be great. <laughs> well, I guess like I guess since you talked about some of your influences and stuff, I think I think we we're kind of in a in a unique position since I, I, we're kind of I think we both have a kind of a clear influence from different kinds of areas. Um, I guess like, you know, as you said, like you're, you're the Nakey Jakey at home kind of thing. We're, we're that, but for red letter media, we're red letter media at home with cartoons. <laughs> so it's obviously like knowing that from our perspective that like, that's kind of the clear one that you can initially kind of see, but like, obviously there's a lot of influences that kind of go into content creation. That's not necessarily as immediate, um, I know you kind of talked like you touched on it, um, like, you know, you're, you, you mentioned, uh, I think it was Thai 77, seven or three sevens or whatever, however they say their name, <laughs> like their, their chrono trigger, chrono trigger OST, like kind of their video that kind of goes back to your bonfire thing. And then like you kind of listed Scamboli and voice critical. Um, do you, do you have any kind of like specific kind of like, ten, like, tangible things you can point to about like the uh, other content that like has inspired your stuff okay so i want to say i've always been creating this is something i kind of realized in retrospect as i like made a channel like ever since growing up i I always like made stuff like really early on like i want to say like i was like 11 or 12 i made like dragon ball z fanfics because i was a huge dragon Mm -hmm. ball fan and i i used to like literally like I would record Tenkaichi 3 footage, like gameplay footage, like not even though I didn't have a capture card. I was broke. I was 12. I just like put my camera up to my TV, recorded the TV, and then I would just take that footage from the Tenkaichi 3. I'd edit it on Windows Movie Maker. I'd throw some subtitles to be like how the characters talked. And that's how that's how like I started creating shit like that. I remember I would make like I made my own card games. I would, I'd, I'd always been some, I always like creating stuff. And then. I um, I stopped doing it for a while when I turned like 18. I just wanted to get a job like anybody that around that time you're done with high school. You got to like you got to go. You got to go make a living and shit, you know. So I did a job I didn't like for like a few years. Had an existential crisis, played Dark Souls while reading Berserk. Just these two goaded things at the same time and kind of experiencing them both. Berserk. It was like the bonfire uh, of dreams scene where he's talking about like wanting to find his purpose and doing more in life than just swinging a sword. I was like, damn, I get that shit now, you know, because I feel like anime I've watched has always said shit like that about finding purpose. But as a kid watching, I was like, the fuck are they talking about? (laughs) Like, I had no clue what they meant. But this time it actually like hit me because I understood now. And so that made me like kind of want to think about what I want to do with my life. And then I just finished Dark Souls. And after finishing Dark Souls, as I was playing, I just had so much like fun and engagement with that game. It's one of my favorite games of all time, uh, Dark Souls 1. And I would just write things about it as I was playing. And then eventually I realized I should make videos. And I was like, I'm gonna try it, you know? And um, as I was like thinking about what the channel would be like, uh, I remember finding Nakey Jakey that was kind of like the fir- one of the first things where it was like, okay, he's using this green screen, talking in front of it. And I just like the like look of that. I just like the idea of having a person in front of the sure. footage. I don't know. It just really resonated with me. And I was like, that's cool. Okay, I'll, I'll add that to it. And the other thing was just because uh, I knew it was going to be video essays. But the reason I gravitated towards taking influence from someone like Scamboli was where I felt like a lot of AniTube that I watch because I love AniTube. But a lot of things I watched was very like very analytical, like very, um, you know, very like big words, very uh, calm voiced, very not, not calm voice specifically. But yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah, you guys yeah. know what I, yeah. what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what I liked about Scamboli was it just kind of felt like another guy. Like, he just felt like a dude that was just like, yeah, I like this shit. This is cool. And I I liked that. I liked having that kind of like casual conversation about something. And that kind of influenced me and how I wanted. Because I remember my my first draft of like, I made this video. It's like this character analysis of Spike Spiegel. It sounds nothing like the first draft. The first draft was me attempting to sound like, I don't know, like super eye patch wolf mm-hmm. or something, oh, sure. you know, you were like, doing an accent. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. Bike speaking. Yes. The most yes. I was trying to do an anime accent. character in anime. <laughs> 
changed he changed my life <laughs> and yes yeah, so yeah all this stuff and yeah yeah and I was trying to be really wordy I was trying to be very like analytical and say all these smart things and it, it, it wasn't me and uh, what it came down to was what I liked about Scamboli was not to say that those other creators aren't being genuine but the fact that what I was that I was trying to imitate them you know I wasn't mm-hmm, being sure. genuine and I like to, when I like talk I just like to be passionate and I just like to say things how I casually talk like I'm talking right now is how I talk in my videos and that's kind of what I was like I think people would appreciate that I think people would appreciate just the genuineness of talking like that and that's kind of I feel like that comes a lot from me seeing Scamboli do it like that and I was like this is really cool uh that's something that came to it and that kind of si- similar thing with Moist Critical like that's kind of how he talks like he literally like he he's probably the most genuine you quote unquote YouTuber I've ever seen dude just you know sits in front of a camera and yaps for like a couple minutes and you know that's that's Mm. awesome you know i do like the way he like strings words together like cuss words that's always something i was like damn it'd be cool if i could do that i can't do it as well as him but i I always like that um uh what else oh and then uh adult swim obviously i told you about Mm. that earlier adult swim was just in creating an atmosphere creating a vibe and same with tie at 777 uh i found that as i was like making this channel and it was just so cool because it like already when you like see it on your YouTube recommendation, this like the, the the title is all in Japanese, and you're like, why did this get? And you look at the views, it's like a million views. Like it, it for no like compared to like what the YouTube algorithm usually pushes, you wouldn't expect something like that to get a million mm-hmm. views. You know what yeah. I mean? It seems like something that wouldn't do that. And then you click on it and it's already, so it's already like this cool, weird, mystical thing. You go to the comments and it's just people typing checkpoint, telling like what they're going through in life. And I'm like, that is so cool. That is just such a cool, interesting thing. And then the, the top comment, I remember being something like, if you found this, this is like the bonfire or the corner of the internet, take a rest, you know, things like that. I was like, that's really cool. And that, and that really influenced how I wanted to like, make the vibe of the channel. Yeah. It, it's interesting always hearing like other people's influence. Like you can see like some obviously. And then like, but it's interesting to see kind of how like they all kind of come together. Cause like, you know, like ours, obviously, like I said, red Learn media, but then like, I, you know, I think I take some influence from like, you know, positive selects content, like not necessarily like his content style, but like, you know, he was probably like one of the first I can remember on in kind of the YouTube space that was like giving grace and like giving attention to shows that weren't necessarily seen as like quote unquote consensusly good kind of shows. And it's kind of like, it was mm. like, I guess like a bit more insightful in that way. We were like, Oh, I didn't really think about even looking at these shows from this angle or like, you know, this perspective. Um, and then like, I, you know, I think, uh, I would say like the gorillas are probably another inspiration in a way of like that kind of media mix. And, mm. and um, we have a robot version of a character. We have a robot version. We have our fucking own just bullshit like lore going on in the background for some fucking reason. I don't, I don't know. I love that <laughs> shit. I, I love like weird, like, like almost like unnecessary lore to do with mm-hmm. your channel. That's like a big part of my thing. I I like uh all like how all my videos I'm at like a specific like pixel art most of the time it's a forest but like how each time I reach a sub goal I move on to this different area until like I hit a million where I reach the island that is the island on my PFP I love doing shit like that I think that I think that's just cool and fun and it gets people really like into yeah. it like yeah people are like ta- like people comment about that stuff they're like yo I can't wait till he reaches the island at a million <laughs> yeah it's that parasociality. <laughs> yes yes that's everything that's 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 the bread that's well, the yeah, money yeah, right yeah, there. i don't know it gives it gives people a reason to come back and and and, and keep watching stuff because they're like oh man is this gonna be you know it, there's probably at least a couple people who click on these like our videos our podcast episodes and be like oh boy is there gonna be another skit dancing the wacky plot <laughs> not today <laughs> Not today. No, not today. it's not in this one. We should we, oh, no. Okay. We should uh, we should definitely. I think it would be fun though. Do like an ARG at some point. <laughs> I have like I have this lore of like whenever I talk about my brother, I, I portray him as this. My brother's a bodybuilder. He's oh, like a okay. really buff dude, and uh, he has like no neck, you know. <laughs> and uh, whenever I portray him, I put him as Broly's body with Mark Wahlberg's <laughs> face, no neck. <laughs> But that's just because that's what he looks like. That's what he looks like. And people love and every time I show him, 
It's because I'm gonna show him, he always like beats the fuck out of me. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. And people, I feel like there's a subset of my fan base who just watch my videos to see if this video will have another segment of my brother beating me up. Cause it always happens. If he is involved in a video, yeah or talked about he will beat me up and it will it, it's each each time i've showed it it's it gets worse and worse it's one of those things where it's like <laughs> i mean to a certain extent it's it's gonna weird some people out because every video is going to be someone's first exposure to your content so mm -hmm. if they, they see something like that they're gonna be like what the fuck is this but on the other hand <laughs> that could make it also be intriguing them and they'll be like what the fuck is this and i want to know more and i'm gonna check out the the early videos yeah. to see where how He's related to Mark Brawly Wolder. <laughs> Brawly Bird. <laughs> yeah. I always worry about that too. Like whenever I'm going to do, like recently I did a segment of him beating me up. I think in, what was it? In the, in the Zelda atmosphere mm -hmm. video. And it was the longest one yet. I think it was almost like a minute. And I, I worried. I was like, if this is someone's first video, <laughs> like what are, they're going to be like, what the fuck's going on? Like, why is he getting beat up by this guy? This Mark Wahlberg Broly character. Like if, you, if you know, you know, I get, I don't know. I, I, I like channels that have like mm -hmm. weird in jokes or lore. Cause I, I don't know I, if uh, the more I watch the content, the more I just kind of be like, Oh, I, I get it now. I, I understand again. I guess go back, goes back to us ripping off red letter media. Cause there are a lot of like, in jokes, red letter media. I'm a big fan of um of Germa nine eight five and uh, the Germa fandom. Germa based humor is just all esoteric in jokes that somehow build off each other and over the course of a decade now, it's fucking bizarre. It's it's cool when like after all the build up, they some they will if they like come into like this very like emotional impactful like peak. That's something I strive for. Where like if I am gonna do these like esoteric kind of like comedy well mostly they're like mostly played up for laughs but when those laughs can turn into cries that's like that's ah, peak right like there a, that's like that's like the that, goal uh, you know what i mean uh everything everywhere all at once or what's the um swiss army yeah man is, yeah that's, is that's, the other that, that, those that, guys that does that yeah, yeah they're great at that yeah for sure um so we talk about influences and stuff um you kind of you talk a lot about that in your videos so it seems like those kind of things, like it's interesting to see you kind of focusing on like, you know, the influence of like anime on Avatar or the influence of anime mm. on in, on films and stuff like that. Do you do you think that you're just kind of naturally drawn toward like trying to understand like content on that kind of like base level of like where it's kind of coming from, from like its influences and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I, I it's something I've noticed that, too. It's like I always really like the idea of like finding out what influenced what then not just because i think well I've, I've always been a person is like if you like something or if you love something you should like love it with everything you got you should like put all your passion into it i think part of that is learning about it and i think a great way to learn about it is like learn where it came from what steps it got to yeah. get there and i think influence is a big part of that i think it's i think it's interesting to see how something started one way and a lot of times um you know, things will just be a, at first will just be a copy of something else. And then they'll take all these other influences and eventually, you know, you, you become this amalgamation of all these things. And then you're just, you're just a whole new hole. Yeah. And I always think that's interesting. It's something I, I like about like music and artists that I listen to. It's anime, video games, all, all that stuff. I, I think it's like super interesting to look at. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like I, I vibe with shows on that level where it's like, I, like obviously the ones that I really enjoy, I want to like really dissect and be like, try to understand like, oh, where do, where is this coming from? Like in Evangelion, I had to, I had to understand where the, the, the maternal metaphor is coming from for why they're in the, in the, the, and Demi plugs and how it's always the father that's like in the fucking mech, like builds the mech and gives it to the, the son and all that. Like, I'm always like interested in that element of shows. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've I've learned I guess I've learned like more recently to like do that for as much as I can. Where like even like a show, if I, if I can pick something out of a show that's like that, 
even if it's not something that I'm in love with, like uh, I guess a recent example might be like that Zom 100 show we did a video on. Like just watching that for me, I was like, oh, this is interesting because this is like, this is reflective of like the Western way of like escapism and the Eastern way. And you, you get like this weird kind of meshing of these different kind of cultures, stuff like that. So like I do more research into that and it, it's able to like increase my appreciation for not only the show, but like, you know, different things in general. Cause like, you're just kind of building that database for yourself. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I feel that like a lot of times too, where if you learn about what influenced something, it'll, it like almost tells you something more about the series. A lot of times, like, I don't know if this kind of counts, but like with angel's <laughs> egg, you could, if you just watch angel's egg, you might be a little confused, but if you're, if you find out it's, it, it's in, the influence of it came from uh, Mamoroshi having the struggle of kind of like losing his uh, faith in Christianity that like changes how you, you, you understand it right. better. You, you understand like now you, yeah, you can like watch it and think that in your head that like, okay, this came from that. And it's like, it makes so much more sense. And then you can, and then you read the Bible and you're like, you take out certain verses and you're like, Oh, that is probably why there's this arc that's flipped upside down at this scene. And yeah. I, yeah. I think it, it just helps understand it's interesting too because anime, I mean, it gets criticized for this as well, but anime is very like, um, uh, incestuous in terms of its references but I think at the same time that means that the more you watch and especially the further you go back you know into things like the 80s and 90s which are you know still being referenced in in anime today it can you can then end up picking up on these references that you know when I one of my first anime that I'd ever seen was Gurren Lagann and uh, if I were to rewatch it today there's probably a lot of stuff that I would pick up on uh, now versus when I had originally watched it however many years ago because I've seen so much stuff that Gurren Lagann is uh, building off of and referencing as a result. Yeah. I guess kind of speaking toward like looking at influences and kind of getting a great appreciation understanding and stuff. Um, I kind of I kind of wanted to touch on because you, you brought this up last time. We, we I guess for people listening, we had a whole three hour podcast y'all just y'all missed we didn't record that one <laughs> um but we talked we talked uh i guess it was like two weeks ago now almost damn um but we talked last time we talked you you kind of i'm gonna say i would say you called me out you didn't really call me out but it's just it's funny to say it though because you you mentioned, oh, you yeah. mentioned how I, I had mentioned i wasn't like a fan like i went back and listened so we can we can put the clip of what i said here i'm not like a fan of videos where it's just like story time, I guess is the way to put it. Where it's just cut, like you know, like internet pit stop. Um, but yeah. like when you brought so when you brought that up, I had actually been watching your stuff again and like making notes and stuff. And so mm -hmm. like I kind of turned around on it already. I was like, oh, you know, I like I like um because I hadn't. I guess for like context, I when I said that I was basically ma mainly kind of coming from um your Dark Souls video and your 90s aesthetic video. And mm. like, for me, like, I, I I always am looking for like a greater appreciation for things and like getting like a different outside perspective from my own, right? So it enhances my perspective and stuff. And I wasn't, I didn't really yeah. get that from those. Um, and like, you know, you're obviously the influence is kind of there. And I was like, oh, OK, this is just, you know, I'm not I'm not really digging this. Um, but as I kind of was like watching your stuff for this more and like I got seen like I'd seen your um, newest stuff. Like I watched like when you upload a news thing and I watched the uh, backgrounds one. And I like that one. But going through like your whole catalog and kind of getting a, a better picture of like how you've evolved your kind of content. I was like, I, I, mm -hmm. I get a, I had a better idea of like where you were coming from. And so like, even now when I go back and, and look at like the nineties aesthetic video, like the things I didn't necessarily like are still there, but it's like, I, now I was like, oh, he was kind of focusing on like the, the outfits and stuff and like the, uh, the fashion and stuff. And you kind of, you started making videos on that. So now I can have it. I'm like, okay, now I see kind of where the thought process was going. And so I guess like now I have a greater appreciation for your stuff, because like I, you know, just breaking down the influences and not just like 
dismissing it, you know, initially. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I definitely didn't want it to like, I was trying hard to not make it feel like uh, being called out. I, it was <laughs> no, just like, I think it's um, good. Cause it's, me- it's good to humble people. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's good to humble people when they decide. Oh, no. <laughs> that was, that, that was, that wasn't my intention no, I at all. I, yeah. I just was, um, I, yeah, I, I really, uh, I, I care about my stuff and uh, I always want to like hear opinions on how I could improve my stuff. So, it, 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 if you just told me like, oh yeah, you, I think you can improve on this and this, I think that'd be really cool. Cause that's, that's kind of a goal. I, I, I have this weird thing of like, I want to make good anti-tube content for some, I have this like attachment to anti-tube and uh, like, like for example, like recently I got a comment on my backgrounds video from Trixie saying that she like, she like, it was a positive mm-hmm. comment. And that shit filled me up because like, you know, I, I watched Trixie when I was like, like I was a teenager watching her. And I was like, dang, that that felt really good. Like made me feel like I was doing something good with any two content. But uh, the reason I asked you was because I was worried because you specifically said story time content. Um, and I was worried that that maybe meant you only had watched. Uh, what was it like? Like three or four of my videos because I don't make story time content all the time. I just make it for um, sub goals. When I hit a sub goal, I make a video like that Yu-Gi-Oh video or like my first fight video. Sure. And I was like, wait, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to get the wrong <laughs> idea. I, I don't make this stuff all the time. That's just like a one time thing. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, that was all it is. But thank you. Thank you for uh, looking back. I'm not uh, some of those videos I want to work. I, I wish I did better on too. like the 90s one. If I did that now, it would be a lot better. I, I also have like things I don't like about that video. More of it, most of it was just like not fully understanding what I was talking about. Cause a lot of my early stuff, like that video, that script for that video was like one of my first scripts I ever wrote. A lot of times when I started making content, I was just scripting without much research. I was just like, here's what I want to talk about. Here's what Showing I like. And I made a script yeah. out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very stream of consciousness. And, um, and that works sometimes, but other times when you're tackling a certain subject, like if I did anime backgrounds um, without the research, if I did that straight off of stream of consciousness, it would be a much shorter video. And I don't think it would hit the same. It's, it's something I've had to come to learn. I remember when I, I got a comment from Steven on that video and he was just pointing out literally because Steven's like the research guy, in my opinion. I think he's yeah. just like, you ask him something about anime, he'll tell you and he'll tell you what year and like, who did it? He'll tell you everything. Oh, and yeah. Like, yeah. he like pointed out all these things I was wrong about. And I was like, no, this this is important. If I'm going to make content in this space, I think it's important that I, I I do. I work harder on make doing research. And that's why I appreciate like being told things like, hey, you could do better on this and, and all that, which I'm sure it's probably some of the things you had a problem with in the 90s video was like probably things I just said that were like plain wrong you know yeah. so i don't yeah i don't want to yeah. get into and it so right? i, I don't that. like because like I, I do think like you, you your videos like you call very like charismatic and very like personable um i actually really liked your uh ironically having said i don't like story time content i did really like <laughs> your Oh video where you're talking about how it like Thank saved you. your because like again I, I really like having like that personal perspective on things and like i do prefer content where it's like i'm learning something like if they can kind of incorporate um something like about the i don't know the industry or the show or uh something that i haven't known before if they can incorporate something like that into a more personal anecdote like that's obviously like my preference like that would be peak for me or whatever but like i don't necessarily have like something oh totally against um just like have using, uh, you know, something as like a springboard to talk about something. Um, it just, yeah. you know, obviously it just and depends on the content. Um, yeah, that was, that was something, uh, cause Shabes, uh, he also told me we liked the Yu-Gi-Oh video, but he also told me the same thing where he's like, I liked it, but it was more of like using Yu-Gi-Oh as a springboard to talk about this arc. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But he's like, I think it would be better if you could, kind of connect the thing and it's like in a retrospect kind of it's kind of obvious and that's kind of like there i have these really big video ideas that are coming hopefully soon and they they have to deal with that and like like one of the things I, I've, I've been thinking about doing is making a video about how not just anime but i'm going to make a video i was planning to make a video about like um the the idea of like it's going to be called like 
it's okay to cry and just kind of talk about media, mostly anime that really helped me in dealing with uh, I, me as a person. I'm a very like vulnerable dude. And I kind of struggled with that. Uh, I think I talked to you guys about this last yeah, time, yeah, like two we, weeks we ago. About it, yeah. I don't know if you, yeah. it, I don't know if I want to go over it again, but it no, wasn't recorded. Fine, yeah. So I just it's, say, yeah. Yeah. but uh, yeah. And that was something that um, I struggled with. Cause like, uh, my dad, uh, well, my, my family were, were Bosnian and uh, Bosnian people are very traditional in the sense of like the man, he, he, he build house, man, build house, man do labor and man don't cry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Man do labor, woman cook, man, never cry. And that, that was, and I didn't mind that. Like my, I love my dad. I think he's great. And, but, and I completely understand he's not going to be able to like help me with all my problems. There's things that he went through that he well he he like lived that he can't really teach me right and that was something i struggled with was whenever i would cry because i'm a pretty i'm a like pretty emotional vulnerable dude uh his his lesson would always be don't cry men don't cry and it was something i struggled with for a while and a lot of um i always felt like i i was weak if i did so if Mm. i showed emotion and uh, i kind of like as i grew up had to learn that 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 isn't the case you're not weaker because you show emotion or because you have a softer side to you. And a lot of anime, especially like uh, Yu Yu Hakusho was one of the anime that really um, talks about that in this arc that Yusuke goes on where at the beginning of the show, Yusuke is like this hooligan, kind of like, you think he doesn't give a shit about anything. And then like, he saves a kid and you're like, that doesn't make sense. Why would he save it? He, I thought he didn't care about anything. Mm-hmm. And then you find out that the whole like hooligan thing was kind of this defense mechanism he put up because he felt no one cared about him. So he should just play into this like role of what everyone thinks he is. And the big, the big arc of him fighting uh, Tagoro, someone who gave up their emotions, their vulnerability and their humanity. Cause the reason Tagoro became a demon was because he was vulnerable and he suffered for it. And that made him think I have to give up on vulnerability. I have to become a demon. And what, and the, the, the whole time what Tagoro wanted from Yusuke was to beat him because he's human, because he's vulnerable. And that's what happens. Uh, Genkai basically kind of giving a speech to Yusuke that you're not going to activate your full power until you put down your walls. And when he sees Kuwabara die, even though he didn't, uh, but he sees him die, that's when Yusuke fully activates his power. Yusuke could beat Tagoro because he was vulnerable, because he allowed himself to feel. Yeah. And that's kind of something that uh, I'm going to make, I'm planning to make a whole video, but I'm going to talk about Vinland Saga because they also kind of tackle that like toxic masculinity yeah. idea. That's going to be in there. Berserk also talks about that where Guts goes on that like edge lord. I don't care about anything. Arc leaving his loved ones and realizing, hey, that was wrong. You should have been with the people you love. It's OK to surround yourself with people you love and cry and have these feelings. And it'll mm-hmm. make it, it ultimately it's what makes us human. And in a, I, I always look at it in that like Guts is going on an arc of realizing his humanity or becoming more human while Griffith is kind of, kind of um, losing his humanity. Griffith's whole. Yeah. Cause his whole Griffith's whole thing was he, when he, he felt things, he hated it. Like the whole scene where he's in the bath and he felt shitty. He like scratching himself and t- until he's bleeding because he's trying to bottle this emotion. He wishes to not have it. And that's ultimately what Fento is a, a person who has no feelings, a person who doesn't feel anything. No, no, uh, no. Uh, what's the word when like he, he did, he says it in the manga, he lost his empathy, uh, empathy, empathy. Yes. Empathy. And I, was saying, I thought we were going to have another thing that, where we couldn't remember what word was needed. <laughs> <laughs> the Devon Kuntz quirk. Yes. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, that was something that uh, I'm planning to make videos on. Uh, because of the kind of feedback I got on that. And uh, I think they're going to be great. I, I really hope that uh, people will appreciate like talking about that. Cause a lot of anime is really good about talking about that. They're really good about talking about dealing with vulnerability as a, as a boy, especially Shonen. I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of Shonen deal with that. Yeah, yeah. So Yu Yu Hakusho is one of those, Vinland Saga. So yeah, that that's that's something I, I want to get Sorry to get into like a whole. Oh, no, 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 like, no. I, fine, yeah. I, I think that's a good like, I like idea for a video, honestly, because um, like I said, like I said before, like I, as much as I like Yu Yu Hakusho, I never really approached it from like that specific angle. So, you know, again, it goes back to like, that's what I like to see out of content is like being able to incorporate like not only, like the the textual kind of themes along with like these personal anecdotes and like what 
you kind of see from your perspective. Um, but it, it, it I, it's interesting because I, I guess I kind of feel like I went through an, a similar kind of um, phase, I guess. Um, because like when I was in middle school, I would say like I there for a while I was like very emotionally stunted where like it was like borderline just like fucking uh psych like uh what's what's the word uh not psycho psychopath um antisocial sociopath. sociopath like a borderline sociopathy yeah. because like <laughs> I was just like a fucking just complete fucking asshole for like no fucking reason like just because like I and it's not even like there was like some kind of like major like I, I, I guess it might have been it could have been like because I had like you know I just experienced like death at a young age but it wasn't like anybody who was like my parents or anything so it's like it's weird it's not mm. like oh it's not like a major thing but it was like a, a relatively close relative kind of you know um, and that kind of like mm. warped my perspective I guess on things where like I guess I became emotionally stunted without realizing you know you're a fucking kid it's hard to fucking you know, be aware of that kind of shit where like I had to like when I started doing something more productive in high school, I feel like I kind of was able to like work on myself in that way. And then like anime has been like it has been a very healthy kind of outlet for like emotional kind of stuff um, where I can watch like a like a fucking cry porn like Anohana or fucking uh, Your Lie in April or something and enjoy it in that way and not it not like have this weird dirty feeling to it or like shame attached to it. Cause it's just like, you're just yeah consuming the media as it's kind of meant to be. Right. Well, yeah. Like media kind of offers like a, like a, a safe space in a way to, you know, to have like that sort of emotional vulnerability, especially, you know, if you're like, you know, like us, you know, growing up, uh, fifth, you know, through our teenage years and looking back, there wasn't a lot, of media I noticed it at that age that was an anime that really had that same sort of emotional resonance aspect to it. I mean, there's, there's stuff made for like teenagers, but I'm thinking of like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get a uh, particularly emotional watching uh, that 70s show or like any, any sort of like sitcom like that, really, at least not in the same way that like I, uh, I get from like um, the pathos that I uh, see a lot in, in anime, especially anime uh, aimed at, at uh, younger people. Well, a lot of, a lot of that content yeah. wasn't really like tackling on those subjects either. Like you think of like, right. you know, a Naruto or like a Fist of the North Star, like they're very much like incorporating those kind of themes of like, wholeness in a way right like that's the whole dichotomy between naruto and sasuke sasuke is like cold and building themselves up to be like you know able to stand up on their own do everything on their own kind of thing where naruto is more vulnerable and allows himself to rely on others and that's a very like core part of the the conflict in naruto and that was like one <laughs> of the most popular fucking anime in, in not only in japan but in the, in the west um, yeah. arguably it is more popular than One Piece or Bleach at the time. Um, oh, def- oh, yeah, like that uh, like period from like 2005 to like, when did, Naruto, when did the Naruto TV anime end? God. I want to say like Shit. 2018 or something. With all that... Yeah, yeah there's definitely yeah. a good decade there where I'd say of the big of the big three, what we call the big three, I definitely feel like Naruto was the biggest one, then One Piece, and then Bleach. Uh, and now, and now, obviously, I don't, I don't One Piece know. is the I biggest say, fucking thing ever. I want to say in like America, I want to say Bleach was bigger than One Piece initially. I don't think One Piece really took off until <sighs> yeah I, later on. Maybe maybe it, initially, from, yeah. Uh, I I now now differently, but definitely like when they were coming out, and I, I a lot of people blame it on the the original run, no, like what, the what four was kids that? run of One yeah, Piece, yeah, the four kids dub. Jeez, yeah, but. Originally, yeah, Bleach and Naruto definitely is was the most popular and probably still is the most popular in the West. It's like, you know, it's like borderline like Dragon Ball level. It's not yeah, Dragon I mean, Ball, I, but I, it's, least, it's there. It's at least there. in terms of the money it's raking in now, though, it's it's one piece is kind of hard to dispute yeah, on that. It's front. Cut, yeah. it's definitely caught back up like but in that time period. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely Bleach and Naruto and One Piece wasn't that up there in terms of like being right, talked yeah. about and being popular but yeah definitely now one piece one piece is like super popular now mm-hmm. it's, it's only been in the last few years too it's kind of like it kind of, it almost felt like it came out of nowhere like i remember probably 
before the pandemic, I don't think One Piece, you know, I mean, obviously, yeah, being a an anime lot fan, of, aware a lot of, of One Piece. Changed. Uh, but I guess After like the pandemic, pandemic hit and then everyone was locked indoors. So then we're like, well, yeah, time to watch a thousand episodes of one piece. <laughs> and now it's the biggest fucking yeah. thing on earth. The the pandemic definitely like boosted anime fan. Like I remember anime, anime was pretty popular even before yeah. the pandemic for sure. But like, and I thought it kind of like peaked like it. Cause I already saw it as mainstream before the pandemic, but like, I, I was wrong. Like it was mainstream, but the way it's mainstream now is completely different. Yeah, like, I remember yeah. it was. It was like the out. pandemic hitting, and then like TikTok happened. Yeah, and then like so many TikToks about like anime and like like it's crazy. It was, and it was now super McDonald's cool is doing a weird anime uh, promotional thing. I don't know what the hell is really? going on with that. Yeah, have you not have you not seen like the McDonald's thing? Like, have, have you guys ordered McDonald's recently? No. Nah. Uh, what, what's going let on? Me, uh, they're doing a Wick Donald's thing. Like they, is they, like the they BTS picked up on. Burger? Uh, n- is it? Is no, that it's the, like, like a, it's nostalgia like a whole stuff? thing. Like um, oh, because they, I guess like they, they, they learned about the Wick Donald's anime meme, and they were just like, yeah, let's do oh, that for a promotional yeah. thing. So if you order McDonald's like right now, you'll get like this logo instead on it where it's just Wick Donald's <laughs> and then written in katakana Wick Donald's down the side. It's fucking bizarre. I think they're like, cause they haven't, I know they had like in Japan, those like uh little like animations, like a family eating McDonald's uh, go viral mm. a while back. Well, and they do, then they now do a lot just... of like anime crossover stuff with like fast food. Like they had the Shara. Yeah, well, in Japan, burger. in Japan. Yeah. yeah, I'll never, I'll never forget the Pizza Hut in Code Geass. Pizza oh, oh pizza god, Hut? that's going way back. The pizza Butt. It's Pizza Hut, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pizza Hut. I mean, <laughs> McDonald's is basically funding every Shinkai movie now. It seems so. You got uh, is it? What was it called in My Devil's a Part Timer? Uh, was no, it like, I think it was McDonald's. McRonald's? Oh, McRonald's. It was McDonald's. Was it McRonald's, McRonald's, right? Yeah. Something like that. But the point, yeah. So, like, there's always these, these, all these anime parody uh, versions of McDonald's. And now McDonald's is like, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. That's hip and trendy. And so now I think they're <laughs> even doing like some sort of animation with it. I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's. What the fuck? It's it's been a thing. Oh, sure. oh there's also a Wick Donald sauce. Mm. What? what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Uh, but it's there. <laughs> um, cool. I guess. <laughs> I <Yeah>. don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> the more you know. I guess people. There's like a McDonald's. Yeah, like again, a McDonald's well, I'm just time. saying this like goes to show like how fucking popular anime is now that it's like it's 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 reaching a critical mass. Well, yeah, you, you can see from like Google Trends and stuff. People will always point out like how fucking it, I think it like doubled or tripled with the lockdowns. Uh, let me see. You had like fucking My Hero Academia on Netflix. Everybody started watching that. Attack on, Attack Titan, on Titan was was yeah. a big factor of that. You got TikToks of like then, old like, men sitting there watching Attack on Titan in their living room. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, and then now recently with JJK, I remember when the Chainsaw Man trailer came out, it had like so many views, like because like and people had already read the manga. They were like hyped for this show. I'd never seen that much hype for like a new anime show in like forever. I mean, let's be real. Like a lot of those probably hadn't like read the manga. A lot of them probably just like Chainsaw Man. Like that's a fucking badass concept. I'm going to watch this oh show. Oh my God. <laughs> well, have, I, have I told told you uh, talked about the uh, the time? I saw Chainsaw Man at Walmart. Like, no. in the, like the Walmart doesn't sell manga, uh, but they have like a se- a small section in their very tiny ass like book and magazine part of the store. Um, and they have like just like young adult like fiction stuff like that. Did you say something? Chainsaw Zerk Man in there? was there. No, I saw Chainsaw Man there uh, next to the most recent edition of Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Like right next to huh. one another, and I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. <laughs> I swear, I remember uh, somebody saying they saw the first volume of Berserk, and it was like just full on the the guts demon clapping demon cheeks thing <laughs> right there. Oh the yeah, yeah. I think I like, talked about that like like a like a, a library back home. Oh that yeah, just 
that just had ber- uh, the first volume of Berserk over there, and there were some kids playing Fortnite at the computers, and I'm just like, this is an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> and then as a responsible adult, <laughs> as a responsible adult, I saw that Berserk there was like on like one of like the like the second shelf from the bottom, easily accessible to a child, and I did nothing. <laughs> As you should. As a, it's like, ah, oh, no, this is, it's fine. G- guts, guts clapping demon It'll cheeks got one of my videos fine. removed. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah. It's my own fault. I, I should have realized that, like, it, it's a drawing of a guy fucking a demon. It probably, 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 would get, yeah. Uh, yeah. I wonder if, like, it was the image of him clapping the demon or if it was just that his ass was in the shot. Mm. So I'm not sure. I would guess probably. But the, yeah, the the, okay. that'd be my guess. Yeah. So yeah, that got removed. I had Rip. to re-upload it. But <laughs> YouTube's fucking AI shit's fucking insane. Like it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kenny linked us like this fucking thing that you can like put. Uh, oh yeah. Like fucking background or thumbnails and stuff in, and it will tell you on a like judge using YouTube's API if it thinks it's like risque, the likelihood of it being risque. Um, what it, it thinks it identifies it as, and it it, it comes in handy for uh, thumbnails because I used it for uh, was it the one the uh, episode we did with Richard, and it I had to like uh, zoom yeah. in, but then it like when I zoomed in enough, it still was clear like because I think the problem was it saw the hands, and it was thinking that someone was behind them, and so it was like oh this is clearly like somebody having sex on the thumbnail like can't have that going on. So, mm. But when I zoomed in and you didn't mm. see the hands and you just saw the cleavage, and it was clearly like to a person, it's clearly cleavage. They thought it was yes, shoes. You just, you... <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hell yeah. You, so we so we got around so we got around censor uh censorship on YouTube by making the breasts bigger. Exactly. There's a uh a Bruce mm. Lee knockoff anime made like in like 1970s, right after Blue, uh Bruce Lee died. Um called Bruce Lee and, and Chinese Gods. And I can't put this up on screen, but you can find it on Amazon Prime, and you'll be able to see why I cannot put this up on screen just for your... Uh, I'll show you guys, though. This is the poster on Amazon Prime. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> now, now to me... Okay, to, to, for the people listening at home, this is a, a man with very large pectoral muscles, but to Bruce YouTube's, Lee got some milk trucks. Yeah, to, to, to YouTube's that AI, too. What the fuck? it looks like uh, it looks like Bruce Lee's been on estrogen. Yeah. Uh, what a fun, what a funny <laughs> anime though. I, I want to group watch this at some point because it's kind of fucking insane. Also, I think it might might have been the first work of animation made in Taiwan. So, oh, that's cool. The more you know. Yeah, I I've been thinking a lot about. Um, like different perspectives. I mean, like obviously we talk about a lot anyway, but like I've been watching uh, the show called Tamayura, which is about like photography. And uh, it, it I, I've, I've realized how fucking like brain poisoned I am with like media analysis and shit. Cause like I'm sitting there watching the show about uh, photography and it, I, the way that it, it's presented, which is partially intentional. Like it's, it's partially meant for you to like be able to have like a more universal experience out of it. But immediately I'm just like, oh, this is just like fucking just different perspectives on anime. Like, <laughs> I you see the same show and like it just looks uh, for you're looking at from a different angle from like your different place in life. And it's just you get a totally different experience. It's just like this anime. is like you drawing. This is like you drawing a connection between like Hyoge Mono and Ishizoku reviewers. Oh, yeah. No, it's an just insane like that. comparison. Well, because yeah. like Hyoge Mono is basically just like fucking anime discussions in the modern day except they're just doing uh fucking tea ceremonies and- about, yeah tea ceremonies and and pottery pottery um <laughs> so like i i always like like to see and I'm, we i haven't really done a lot of it but like i would like to try and do more like incorporate more like trying to get across that perspective through like your presentation right um mm-hmm. i actually came across a video from I believe it was a Swedish channel recently where he was talking about Galaxy Express in a very specific way. Like it was, it was kind of like your Yu-Gi-Oh video where he's ta- using hmm. it to springboard him talking about a relationship that he had. 
And with that relationship, they she was interested in watching anime, like older anime. So they watched Galaxy Express together. And the beauty of like Galaxy Express is like there's so many different like vignettes in it. So there's like different stories that would resonate from different uh, experiences, right? So he's hmm. focusing on these ones that are talking about like loneliness and and love lost and stuff in this video because the relationship didn't work out. They broke up after they finished Galaxy Express. And so he's basically likening her, his like his ex, to uh, Meiteu, who's like, you know, this kind of ideal uh, romantic fantasy in a way in the show. And he's he's very mm. much using it all as like this experience for you to like understand where he's coming from in a way that's not just literally telling you, oh yeah, breakup suck, dude. Like fucking... Yeah. broke my heart <laughs> like it, you just are getting kind of immersed in this like presentation um the channel the channel name was uh anim, anime radion um he does do mm. like english uh subs for his channel so you could watch oh, okay. it um but he just speaks oh, cool. in, in swedish um, see when you said a channel from sweden i just expected it like a swedish guy talking in english no he, he's speaking in sweden or swedish but uh yeah he does he does translate the videos which is cool Awesome. Um, is this um is this like a smaller kind of like new channel like is it like a is kind of like a niche yeah, one? he's pretty i forget how many subs he, that's the, the video i'm talking about actually um it'll be oh cool cool for anyone on youtube it'll be on a card somewhere uh but yeah he's got like 360 subs so yeah, he's he's oh that's awesome i lo- i always love finding like because the YouTube algorithm will just like recommend me videos from very like small channels, and then it's it's like cool to find those. And yeah, a yeah. lot of times like it's like content you'd expect from like oh you think they have a hundred thousand subs with like how great the video is. And it's like oh no, they're just starting up, and that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's been a very <laughs> we we've been crusading against that for some time. We fucking just hate. Oh the yeah, YouTube yeah. Algorithm. I got the AniTube list for anyone. <laughs> Oh yeah, check out there's a whole ass the list of, uh, of, it? of like almost three thousand AnyTubers. Uh, AnyTubers going all the way back com? to like two thousand five. Yeah, any AnyTubeList.com. That's yeah. A, that's A N I T U B L I S T dot com. That's a really cool thing y'all are doing. I really, I really like that you guys are doing that. I think it's a really cool way to just like help anytube yeah. in general help new people coming into it i guess since we're on the subject of anytube since you you kind of said that you've been a fan of like old older anytube um what what is your perspective on like the current state of anytube like do you think we're kind of i guess like you could you could break it down in different different elements but do you think we're like in a better place generally or I'll ask the question worse? Rumi's trying to ask. Is Annie Tube dying? <laughs> is Annie Tube dying? <laughs> are we living honestly, are we walking through the empty age? <laughs> I, I mean I mean I'm not I, I'm not the best like I'm not the most knowledgeable on the subject, but I don't I don't think so. I mm-hmm. mean it, it it's there was definitely a point like around I don't know. I want to say like 2017, 18, where I thought that like as someone Hmm. was watching it, I thought like the idea of a someone newer kind of coming into it would be very difficult because I don't know, even like the biggest people, Giga, uh, yeah, everyone on Trash Taste, you know, like they, they all stopped really making any tube, any tube content, like Japan based content. So I thought like maybe, maybe not dead, but there was like, this ceiling in a sense, mm-hmm. but like, I don't know I, when people say that there's a ceiling to anime content, I'm sure there is I, like, I, I don't expect any tubers to be like the most subscribed channel. That's kind of something right. yeah, I think you, you just accept when you go yeah, into the, the niche of making any tube content, you're not going to be Mr. Beast. And that's, I think that's okay. Like, yeah, yeah. For, like, but to me, I, I like, I, they were at a place where I think anyone who makes any tube content can make a million subs. And I, I think that's, I think that's great. I think that's fine. And I, I, I think we're in a pretty good place. I would say now I, what I like about it is I think there's more different types of voices and faces more now than ever. And I think a lot of it because like mm-hmm. anime in general has become so popular with all kinds of different people now watching, especially after the pandemic, where yeah. now I feel like the types of videos you'll get are much different and you 
unique and just the types of people who are making it with new different types of perspectives, you get different types of content. So overall, I think we're in a pretty good spot for it. And uh, yeah. What's interesting that, that, that you brought up like that, that period of like 2016 to 2018. Cause I feel like at least when I think of Annie too, that's kind of what I think of. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of people think of when they say it's like, oh, any tube is like dying or it's dead or whatever. When I think it's more, almost like a um, it's like a ship of Theseus kind of thing where the the parts have just been recycled out. There's still people making, you know, anime con. Uh, there's probably more people making anime content on YouTube than at any time previously. Um, but it's different people now. It's different perspectives and it's not the same yeah. style of content you know, that's sort of uh that sort of uh style of video essay that like Beatrice was doing between yeah. the years of like 2014 sure. and 2018 doesn't really exist anymore. It's a lot, you know, the, the kinds of videos people yeah. are making and the stuff people are talking about is a lot different. I mean, that was something um I was thinking about a lot where like originally I was going to make the backgrounds video into like multiple parts mm -hmm. and like, I'm sure it could have done well, but I thought about like, Maybe if, if I were to release anime back, video anime backgrounds part one in that era, like 2016, I think it would have been fine. I think that would have been great. Part two, part three, part four. But I don't think like that is something, an example of, I don't think that exists as much that could be profitable or not profitable, but like it, it doesn't do as well. Like I like, I feel like back then you could have dropped like Spike Spiegel character analysis part one. Oh that yeah. Been, and that'd be a hit you would have a banger right there, you know? Yeah. Whereas yeah. now, I don't think that's the case. Uh, something, uh, I could be wrong about this, just something I've kind of noticed. I feel like almost, um, we talked about earlier, uh, Kenny Lauderdale, right? Is that mm -hmm. how you say it? Yeah, yeah. He kind of titles his videos where he almost doesn't tell you the name of the anime. He just says yes. like, they drew all the grain of sand on this anime. Like that kind of titling, I feel like that is like very good now for modern content, mm -hmm. like modern anime content, like almost being like, I don't know what the word for it is, but like that, like kind of titling and that that's kind of like, I feel very like modern kind of anime content nowadays that I've noticed. Yeah. Kind of like describing it versus like saying like, how else would you have titled that video? Dragon Maid ret retrospective in, in like 2016 <laughs> or something, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's like a deliberate, uh, uh, decision on on Kenny's part because I think yeah. when we had him on his rationale is like the more specific you make a title like that if you if you make a video if you make a, a video on Dragon's Heaven and you just say like Dragon's Heaven a retrospective oh, yeah, people don't know Dragon's what the fuck Dragon's made. Heaven is <laughs> they're not going to click on the video but if you if you make it something more vague and more general like they drew every grain of sand then not only are you going to get people who aren't familiar with what Dragon's Heaven is clicking on the video, you're just going to get people who are probably unfamiliar with anime in general interested in the video. Yeah. Yeah. He's very much, uh, he very much champions like being, having a title that incites int intrigue and like has the audience like a a asking a question when they see like the title yeah. thumbnail co uh, combination. Like, what the fuck is this? They drew every grain of sand? Like, what do you mean they drew every... So, like, you click the yeah, video what to figure mean? it out. Um, and yeah, boom, four not, million views. That, not not to the same level, but I kind of did something similar when I was making that Air Gear video where I was, like, kind of worried. Because I'm sure, I, as I found out, there were a this big group of people who had seen that anime. But, like, I, I kept feeling like I can't just title it, like, Air Gear review because I mean, yeah. ultimately that's what that video is it's an air gear retrospective but i was like i kind of took a uh i'm sure y'all have seen the creator um i mean i'm like brain farting his name right now he's actually he's a friend of mine uh ah, fuck, i keep getting his name Big friend oh my uh, gosh oh my god uh, <laughs> uh the guy who makes those like it's like mostly cartoon video about cartoons and it's like do you remember x cartoon that's like all his videos I'm trying to remember his name. He also does like a Ash's Journey, and uh, I don't know why I'm brain farting his name right now. It's Jordan Fringe, you fucking idiot. Yes, Jordan Fringe. Okay, that's it. Sorry, my my bad, Jordan. If you're watching this, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but yeah, he. Um, that was something I kind of took for, for that Air Gear video. I just titled it "Do You Remember Air Gear?" Because that's who I wanted to watch the video. People who vaguely remember this 2000s mm. random ass anime that was kind of popular when mm -hmm. it came out and just kind of like got forgotten. And that's, 
I, I've, I've been wanting to do more with that series of like highlighting these anime that at their time period of being released, specifically in the 2000s, I feel like there's like this nostalgia for 2000s anime that isn't really being touched on. And yeah. I want to like touch on these anime that were popular for their time, like fucking like Blue Exorcist was something like that, where it's oh, like yeah. really popular when it came out. And then like it just kind of like so much anime is coming out and it just like gets forgotten over the course of time. Blue and Dragon. It, 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 Blue Dragon was another one. That yeah, just, like, that, that just and, made so gave someone like a flashback. Me saying, <laughs> yeah, and I think and that that helped was just telling it. Do you remember Air Gear? And it got it got really good views. A video about an anime from like two thousand that that's very like, yeah nowadays is pretty obscure. Yeah, I'm gonna be real uh, with fucking Annie Tube. I think we're, I think we're definitely trending in a, a positive direction uh, from because like. I, I kind of said it when we talked before, but I really didn't have a whole lot of respect for any tube up until like mm -hmm. around the time everyone started saying it was dying, essentially. <laughs> Just the, the contrary making you. content. But, so it wasn't it wasn't the contrary because like <laughs> That's I guess I guess like for my perspective a bit, like Beatrice's content at the time with like her video on Sword Art Online, um chaos stuff like that like her sort of online video is is generally regarded very highly and like to me mm. i was in the communities that she i don't know how active she was in those but like it very clearly felt like she just kind of compiled everything that had just been kind of said on those communities mm. already into a video and I, there i guess there's something to be said for like being the person to post a video and say it but like to me, right. it's like, yeah. I, again, I got nothing new out of it. So like when everyone's like, oh, my gosh, she turned the tide on the opinion of Sword Art Online. I'm like, she literally just said everything else that everyone else was saying. She didn't really provide anything new. And like, I feel, yeah, I feel like that happened a lot with like any Sword Art Online video. Like it's oh, kind of yeah. like it's my turn to do the what everyone else is saying about Sword Art Online. I, I remember, uh, I will say there was one video I remember watching. I think it was from Mother's Basement. Was he the one that made the, it's a bad game too, and yes. kind of analyzing why, yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah, I thought yeah. was really refreshing. I thought that was a cool idea and a cool way to like, still hate on Sword Art Online because people, you're going to get money for that. You're right. going to watch that, but do it in a cool, unique way. So that was cool. I feel like now though, you're almost seeing like a, um, a bounce back from that where I feel like now people are like, okay, yeah, the sort of online has problems, but it's, it's not the worst thing ever. Almost, it, almost like, like um, yeah, the Star Wars prequels to an extent. It, it, that makes sense. Cause that they're going to, there's kind of like this, like, like, okay, maybe it's like, like, you know, kind of like backing it up in a sense. Cause mm -hmm. it, for a while it felt like whenever you made any video essay on anime, if you needed to have an example of something bad, it was always SAO. It was, it was like it became a scapegoat of yeah. like video essays. Like, yeah, that was the popular now it's rent a girlfriend. one. Well, that, that again, at the time, yeah. that was the popular show that had been given the green light to hate, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, like I, I, like I said, I didn't have much respect for that time period because I feel like. I, not that I don't think. Her content at the time was like a progression from like the. um you know, the sitting in front of a webcam, just to otaku or arc glass reflection kind of content at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But like, I, I, it just, Bennett it seems like that whole yeah. era was just like too like incestuous, Negative? I guess. Um, oh. we're like, I feel like now mm. there's so much more influence being taken outside of like the Anitube sphere itself in Anitube content. Um, mm. again, like, you know, you're taking influence from, Nakey Jakey and, and Moist Critical and we're taking influence from Red Letter Media and like uh, just outside of the anime sphere and trying to incorporate these things that we see that kind of work like for like our stuff specifically I was always like why isn't there any kind of anime content where like the people are talking and clearly kind of know what they're talking about but are just doing it in a way that's very like accessible for people um, mm -hmm. like you know like uh, half in the bag kind of stuff so like I that's kind of where the impetus for like our stuff kind of came for, for me was like that kind of like desire to see that kind of content exist. Um, whereas like, I think back for a while it was all just like, Oh, Beatrice's content is, is so good. I want to make more Beatrice content. So everyone just kind of was aping Beatrice's content. 
And it's just like, it, like it was never, it never like did anything for me to begin with. And so like, since everybody for a time was just copying her stuff, it did even less. <laughs> and like, before that, like, it's just like your typical kind of reviews, which I didn't have anything against. They're just, you know, people just talking about what shows they like. Um, mm-hmm. But then like when they were able to kind of incorporate more, uh, you know, thinking about different elements and like production stuff and stuff like that. Like it was just from a specific kind of lens and it's like always the same kind of content and people weren't, I, I feel like people kind of plateaued in like trying to incorporate more. And so that's why like Joe's content always stuck out to me when he started making stuff is because it I wasn't really seeing that kind of content at that time. Everything was kind of just Beatrice 2 or Beatrice 3 or <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, well to a certain extent also it's i think also the fact that we, we've started making videos ourselves it's probably also aided just with being able to appreciate others content because i mean to a certain extent it's easy to be a critic when you have nothing to criticize yeah uh, of your own mm-hmm. that's fair um but i, I guess like uh, on the topic of like annie to now versus then uh, I, th- I think it's also interesting to note that like i feel like there's been a shift in the landscape of what can be talked about and do well like i don't know like you know however many years ago 2017 was holy shit don't do seven that. years <laughs> fuck oh god um <laughs> i don't know if you could really make uh videos uh on like shoujo manga like you can now and have them uh reach uh the audience that it oh, does yeah, now in part sure. because of that audience i don't know how like that audience wasn't as large as it was seven eight years ago um, but that, especially, I think manga in general has become a lot more, uh, popular to talk about, especially on YouTube and, uh, well, TikTok didn't fucking exist back then, but I don't know. I don't know if I agree like, yeah. with that necessarily. Cause it's like, I, maybe you could have, um, it's just like, there wasn't really many people doing it in like a way to like market it to a wider audience. Cause like, right. Yeah. That's kind of, the, that's kind of the thing of like, it almost kind well, of goes no, no, back people, to, people have certainly been talking about like, like Shoujo. Uh, manga or just like manga in general since youtube's inception you know yeah I, I could i could probably go back to like 2006 right now and pull you a video on like nana oh yeah uh, well that, no, that, like, who was that yeah. who was that one girl's channel that we were watching that she was like reviewing fucking like or on Ho- high school host club and like full metal alchemist back in like 2006 oh god yeah i know what you're talking about yeah i'll see if i could find that and then i'll put a card up for it <laughs> yeah my, um, my thing was mainly just like i think you could definitely have made that content like i think if you there is just like the idea of marketing your SEO a bit differently like there is now uh, with like the mm-hmm. like I, th- I think the main kind of influence now has been less like a, a Beatrice kind of content more like bread tube kind of content or you know mm. the kind of just yeah. pick your microphone talk to the camera kind of thing that's been the the meta in in anime and just really just a lot of spheres lately yeah um, media, media discussions in general I, I saw a channel the other day and the channel was just uh talking about trans representation in media from like the 2000s like they had a video oh, i think i've seen that i think i've seen that they video. had like a video on like big time rush and i was like i don't remember anything like that <laughs> what the fuck? i don't remember there being like trans big time, rush. big time rush at all what me neither who knew what happened to big time rush i don't know i didn't watch the video yeah lily simpson <laughs> oh. uh I specifically saw the, the <laughs> I specifically saw the magical transphobia of Wizards of Waverly Place, and I'm like, wow, that's a wonderful title. <laughs> uh, I think I yeah, saw yeah, that content like too. that. Like <laughs> the, the video is an hour and a half long, mind. I don't think content like that could have been made uh, seven, eight years ago, ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and part For of sure. it, yeah, longer content's also just become much more acceptable on YouTube. I think because most people own two monitors now. <laughs> Yeah, that that was something that like I I had I kind of, kind of game down to when I was making the backgrounds video because when I started I don't know why even though I knew that like longer videos were definitely more in I always feared making longer videos because I just thought people don't care but uh, oh. mm-hmm. I mean then then I made a four hour backgrounds video and I, like I I really try to make that thing shorter I really did I got it from six hours to four and I think that guy was an shit. accomplishment but I I made I I knew going into it that like. You know, people are gonna have a second monitor. They can yeah, just put yeah. it on the side, and maybe here and there, just like glance over and be like, "Ooh, that's pretty." And, you know, Ironic that's good for enough. a backgrounds video to be playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, for me, longer videos. What scares me about longer videos is the fucking f- file size and having to like edit that shit. Oh my god! It sounds Don't like a goddamn started. nightmare. Oh yeah, I uh, 
not just editing but like uploading it oh uh, no first first taking like little parts that you think are going to be monet- yep. or get demonetized so I, I throw that in okay i'm all good cool well actually no i'm not all good i had to like no nope. first i took out little parts threw them into there as a shorter video i got hit like seven different times so i have to fix all that once they're all fixed the parts were good throw the whole video in now because i think i'm good and it's like oh it turns out three other parts were not that good yep. i was surprised at how much like because i thought i would get away with like some of the like 70s era stuff but like world masterpiece mm. theater shit got hit a lot really yeah uh, marco got hit quite a bit like any visual like I, there was like some points where i had to just block out any of the like marco footage and uh i think that makes sense because world masterpiece theater stuff is still pretty popular in japan they put that shit up on youtube now too so it's just yeah. in youtube system proper yeah but it, that, that was that was that was a bit of a struggle uh, that, that video took like a week to like act it took a week just to like be able to upload it yeah like the video <laughs> is done and now i need to like figure out how to actually get the video on the yeah. youtube itself <laughs> speaking of God, that video yeah. was that the video that you did the most research on do you think yeah i mean it, it kind of had to be with <laughs> like yeah it kind of had to be with like because originally it was going to be more um, just like talking about backgrounds in general. And mm-hmm. then as I started doing the research, I, it kind of came to the idea of like, it would be cool to like go through decade by decade and kind of like, as I'm talking about it, the person who's watching can it can kind of see the evolution on their own, just like watching the video. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, that'd be really cool. And uh, it, it, it's funny. It's like a lot of times I feel like when you're doing research, with anime, it starts off as I'm going to do research on this anime and then it becomes I'm going to do research on all anime and then it becomes <laughs> I'm going to do research on anime in the industry and then it becomes I'm going to do research on Japan itself, you know, as like a as a place. And, it's like, and then it eventually gets, it gets you ridiculous. stumble upon like a globalist conspiracy. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, that's the ultimate what almost made it six hours where it's like. Because like with that video, the big I talk about a lot of artists, but like the big heart of the video is uh, Kobayashi and the people that stem from Kobayashi. Mm-hmm. But they're, like what made it six hours was I was trying to like also tackle other pretty big creators and who stemmed from them. I think the, the luckily the big thing is that it turned out a lot of people stemmed from Kobayashi, at least the people who did like really amazing stuff just just so happened to stem from Kobayashi. That, that kind of yeah. helped out. But yeah, that, that was definitely a struggle. But I would say, yeah, it was definitely my most researched video. It's it's interesting that you, you're talking about like how it kind of evolved through research because like I, I feel like that should be like why we we kind of encourage people to research the videos they're talking about because it's like you start going down these like rabbit holes and start piecing together, like because there there are things that you will piece together from like where you're kind of coming from because obviously you'll you'll approach the research initially from like a, a, a base kind of thesis right like if you're like oh uh backgrounds have improved since two, uh, 1960 or something so you'll go mm-hmm. out and kind of start initially doing research for that but then you might stumble upon like people talk about like why backgrounds have gotten worse and you're like oh why why did they do that so like you start going down these like different rabbit holes and like your content can actually and like even like your i say content because we're talking about from like a, a making a video perspective right but like if you're doing this on your own like your perspective can change just by doing this research to kind of better understand why you feel the way you do about these things um so i always i when people talk about like taste i'm always like you that's part of developing your own sense of taste is like fully understanding like where you're kind of coming from when you're you're like oh this show does x really well it's like really well in context to what so you start kind of contextualizing where that opinion is kind of built from and how you kind of reach that and like what in your kind of personal experience has like kind of that thing resonated with you with. Um, I definitely think it's it's such like an underrated thing for people to actually go and do further reading of sorts or like research into things that they enjoy just because yeah. it's it's this like stigma of like oh research what what that sucks I fucking hate research that's just, I, I, I don't do want to do school like high school and college fuck that 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Citing well, sources. I, I, think it, I think that comes with like video essay content in general. Like whenever someone asks me, like, can you explain? Like a general person will ask me because I tell them like, oh, I do YouTube. And like, oh, what do you do? And I tell them like, I make video essays. And usually I just hope they know what that means. They, if they don't, I have to be like, okay, so you know how like school, you would do like an English paper on a subject you didn't give a shit about. I'm like, imagine that, but the subject you do give a shit about. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's really, that's, and I, yeah. I feel like it comes with making video essays. Like if you, if you're like want, if you're care enough and you want to do research and yeah, I just think like, it, it helps you care about the thing. Like, you know, it's, it's another way of just loving something. You, you learn more about it. And like, like for me, like I always loved anime backgrounds just as like a thing. Like, I just feel like I always kind of noticed that like compared to other media, their anime always had this like weird, like focus. Like, I feel like you don't get a lot of those, like here's a long, slow shot of the environment. Like that doesn't happen a lot. I feel mm-hmm. in any other type of media except anime. Sure, and I no, always I mean, like that about filmmakers, it. Filmmakers, maybe, but not necessarily like yeah, whole yeah, thing like specific like, filmmakers. Yeah, right. But like with anime, you could watch a random ass anime, like just whatever, and it'll have that. And yeah. I always liked that about it. And I, I didn't know much about like artists. Like I didn't even, I didn't even like fully know what Kobayashi did. I knew the name of Kobayashi just off like osmosis of video essays. His dragon, but I never I like. Mean, yeah. And then Shinichiro <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, Kobayashi, uh, to be clear, right? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shinichiro yeah. Kobayashi. My bad. Uh but as I was uh doing the research, I it was just like, oh shit, like all the all the backgrounds and I remember being like, damn, that shit looks beautiful. It was fucking Kobayashi. Or it was mm-hmm, someone yeah. who had learned from him. And yeah. that was like super cool to like find out. And I also think it's helpful for like Cause you said it helps you build your taste. I think like a lot of people would benefit from just like, if they watch an anime and they really resonate with that anime, they should look into who, who did the things that they like about it, who directed it, who did this and just kind of follow their work. And I yeah. think you could like, you know, that'll help you really like build this taste of what you like. Well, I almost feel like that is where a lot of like criticisms that people make of like anime as a whole kind of stem from is like this lack of kind of, experience i guess or like kind of branching out into like different stuff because like you watch a lot of these videos and like they'll be criticizing you know just an example like writing the the writing of like women characters in anime and stuff and then like mm-hmm. they're using Jujutsu kaisen my hero academia and uh demon slayer as examples and it's just like like you know there sure, are more anime that's not the end all be all for what anime is yeah yeah it's like it's it's a valid criticism for those shows but it's like we're we're using those as like a sweeping criticism of like an entire medium where like 200 and something shows come out every year like there's there's probably examples but like just people i guess it's like this idea of like curation where it's like these shows are popular so they must be good but like I feel like we're so far removed from that kind of experience now. Like mm-hmm. you had that with like adult swim and, and tsunami and stuff where people, they, they would curate the content. Like you would get a cowboy bebop and ghost in the shell um, because they had to decide what was going to be advantageous for them as a, a broadcast network. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But now that like anime is just so accessible, like I feel like people should explore and kind of branch out more but it seems like they're kind of just all gravitating toward the same kind of flick of shows what's popping what's yeah, the most popular it's a paradox, the month, yeah. i feel like that's always been kind of a thing with like yeah. the the most mainstream viewers of and it might be a thing with like all types of media like i know that's i think about that for like people who play video games i know people who yeah. like for me i'm very i'm like i'm, I'm someone who if I like something like I like video games, I have this weird attachment in my head where I'm like, I don't want to just play. I want to play all the important classic things that like made this medium so I can like, I don't know. I just like doing that. I like right, being right. this like savant of this media. It's it's cool. It's it's, it's something I like to do. And it helps me understand it more. And uh, I just feel like I, when I talk to people who are just kind of like ca- mostly casual people, they, they tend not to. That's not something that casual people tend to do. They're just kind of like, oh, this game came out. It's popular. Or right. this anime came out. It's popular. This is what I saw on the front page of Netflix today. Yeah. This is the thing I'm able to talk about at the water cooler. 
with my coworkers tomorrow. Hey, I was hey. I was talking with coworkers the other day. They did not know what Evangelion was, and I'm like, okay, I don't know how to navigate this, <laughs> this conversation anymore. I'm in uncharted it, waters. It make it makes me think that maybe like because I don't really know how to like solve that. How do we get casual people to do these things? I I mean, a small thing could be just like like Netflix could have like the a classic anime section and then you could just throw in stuff from oh, the yeah. 70s 80s that would help like just like oh here's like classic stuff from anime well netflix and then much, someone, like, yeah. much like youtube is all algorithm based netflix yeah these platforms like netflix hulu all of them have horrible searchability like yeah. it's a pain, like like i go to i go to i look up anime on netflix they have like the anime genre thing yeah that is not all the anime that is on Netflix, though. There's stuff that they're still that. not showing me, <laughs> even though I, I'm like, show me all of the anime that you have. And they're like, oh, here's the anime that our <laughs> AI thought you would like. And it's like, no, I am no, no longer. Show me, this. <laughs> show me, show me your inventory. We're doing an audit right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I come at it from an interesting perspective, I guess, because like having experienced being on like a where they're kind of their their approach to like anime discussions was to gatekeep essentially where oh, yeah, you yeah. would filter out the people who weren't necessarily willing to adapt or like put in the effort to be able to have those discussions tell by, them to lurk more yeah yeah lurk more that kind of thing and then give them the tools to kind of do these things themselves I feel like that's a way like that's that's a way to build a community, but it's definitely not a way to like keep a sustained community. And you kind of see that right, I think like yeah. on A specifically is kind of like they are kind of just going through the motions now. I haven't really posted on there frequently at all since like 2016 or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely not the same as it was like 2012, 2011, that kind of that kind of range. Um, I definitely think it's and that's that's kind of what I have tried to kind of do with our content is to kind of make a space in which encourages people to talk like kind of in, consume these shows by like creating a space for them to talk about it. Because a lot of people do consume anime as like a social thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, they want to talk about, you know, Game of Thrones with their friends at fucking school or at the water cooler with their coworkers or whatever the fuck. So it makes sense that they would gravitate toward like the most popular shows because those are the shows that have the most people that want to talk about it. So it's like, if you create a space that's kind of just like inviting in a way and gives them the opportunity to talk about these different shows that they normally wouldn't have, a, like, you know, like Shonen Baka Sozaku. Who the fuck's going to talk about Shonen Baka Sozaku? You're not going <laughs> to talk about that fucking obscure anime OVA from the eighties through the nineties at fucking, Abercrombie and Fitch like it, it's just not gonna fucking happen <laughs> yeah um, so like just making a space where like people have seen that and it kind of attracts more people with that kind of mentality you're able to kind of find like-minded individuals who are like oh I saw this show have you seen this one and like you're able to talk about these things that you normally wouldn't be able to I think I feel like that's the best way to go about it at least as of like right now I mean obviously there could it's one of those things where it's like something that's right now will, could be wrong in three days or whatever, right? But it, it's not that it's like a factual statement that this is the best way, but it's, it just feels like, in my experience, like creating a space for people to be able to have that kind of experience like outside of the show with other people is mm-hmm. kind of the best way to get them to encourage them to watch other things. So that's why we like do our our Saturday group watches where we just watch fucking random shit that you wouldn't like I would probably never watch half of these on my own not because like I don't have an interest in it it's just because like it, it's hard for me to like go go out and watch something that's probably I would say like eight, seven times out of ten is not going to be like all that memorable but like mm-hmm. you're watching it for the three times that it, it is like really fucking good and like no one's talked about it, so you can share it with people not necessarily yeah. for the seven times that you're just like, oh, that was all right. That wasn't yeah. bad. Um, well, even so, I mean, I, th- I think what we really what it's it's a matter of getting people to get outside of their comfort zones and, 
you know, have, have experienced things that are unfamiliar to them. And I think, I mean, in general, that's a hard sell for a lot of people just, you know, going all the way back to being kids. I don't want to eat my fucking vegetables, mom. You, can, you can't fucking <laughs> make me. I'm a grown ass adult now. I'm not going to eat my goddamn vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I just had and, a mental uh, break. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, it definitely, it definitely goes back to like the, the, the kind of cultivating your own taste thing. Because like, I feel mm-hmm. like even with as much anime as I've seen, I'm just now kind of reaching that threshold where it's like I've basically am like I've got a few. I say a few, probably like a couple hundred shows left uh, that are like generally well received that. And I'm kind of, you're kind of dipping your toes and like trying to find shows that are completely off the beaten path and just like trying to find stuff that appeals to you that you wouldn't be able to like have somebody recommend to you necessarily because it's just like these aren't like consensusly good shows anymore. These are the shows where like someone might like it, but the reason why someone might like it might be completely just in complete contrast to like why you would dislike it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Right. I think like people don't necessarily, I I think we said this before, but people don't appreciate like their perspective and like their personal taste as much as they should. The reason you mm. dislike something or the reason you like something may be the exact reason someone else has the exact opposite opinion. Like, I really hated this thing, and then someone else really liked that thing for the exact same reasons I hate it. Yeah, that 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 comes up. That came up with uh, not anime specific, but like, you know, I made a video on Breath of the Wild about like mm. what I didn't like about that was that like that game just felt like it felt very like, OK, here's a sandbox you make the fun, you make the content where yeah. like I, I like when like, I feel like the developer made this for me and I kind of have to go. That's what I like. But other people would tell me like, Oh no, I like that. I like having right, well, that, this. That's what I like about like breath of the wild is like that completely yeah. open, like sandbox aspect. Yeah. Video games is a great example of that. Yeah. Cause I think like, I think me and you are in the same position with like breath of the wild. Cause like I grew up on the legend of Zelda, like how it was. And so like, when I play Zelda, I'm wanting that more kind of curated dungeon experience where it's like this yeah. dungeon was curated in a specific way and it's like a puzzle box. You have to do specific things and it's like themed and there's like these layers to it in that way. Yeah. Um, I, like, I guess there's something to the kind of like open experience where you can almost like speed run tactic shit and just yeah. fucking <laughs> like, well, I guess, I guess in contrast, like someone yourself like me, up. Uh, I grew up playing Minecraft and Minecraft is exactly you know, mm. that sort of big open, you know, do what you want experience. I mean, there's, there are now like goals and stuff and there's a progression to it, but it is, I mean, Minecraft is the sandbox game. For sure. Yeah. Uh, with, for me, it was like, I, it's not even that I didn't like, well, I, I, I don't mind the, the sandbox idea. I, I love right. that about Breath of the Wild. I love that I can do whatever I want, whenever I want as, as an idea, that's cool. I guess I just wish I wish they went with the idea, but I kind of feel like for me, at least they went too far in the other direction. They overcorrected. Mm. That's kind of where I feel, because I feel like there there's a there's a middle line there because there's definitely a lot of Zelda fans who also still prefer the curated thing. I'm not even asking for them to go back to like Ocarina of Time four. You know, basically, because yeah, yeah, that's right. what they were doing, kind Linear of experience. Like uh, I would just like, like to the past. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I just want something a little more like in the middle of those two. Like right, just throwing right. a few more dungeons, a few more of these like curated things, kind of like Flesh, Elden Ring, where I kind of feel like things found out that. Like, more. Like um, in Breath of the Wild, there's like what are those like horse stops basically, where you can go and like buy a new horse. The stables, yeah, it's yeah. just stables, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the stables. And it's just like the same building everywhere, essentially. And there's not really much to do there. Like stuff like that, I definitely think, yeah, uh, could have been fleshed out more, especially yeah. like in like the um, the towns themselves, like the, the areas where you're supposed to go and do these like four major dungeons. Yeah, uh, they're supposed but to I, have, be, be like have like all these problems associated with them because of the dungeon itself running amok. And then you beat the dungeon and nothing really changes that much. I feel like yeah. it. it, it Breath of the Wild almost like showed what kind of developers the, the Zelda team is. It, it, they kind of uh, always been like that, like keep have this idea. Like for Breath of the Wild, it was, OK, our games were getting criticized for being too linear. Let's do mm-hmm. an open game. But they don't just do an open game. They put the idea of being open in almost 
every little part of the game. That's why I kind of feel it's overcorrected. But I understand, mm. like, I feel like, because if you look at their older games, like the linear games, it's kind of similar. Almost everything in those games was treated in this linear path. And now mm-hmm. almost everything in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is open. Everything. Like, yeah. the way you do quests, the way you you travel. Like, they try to make even the way you go through a dungeon. It's completely right. open. And well, I, I like the idea of, like, sticking to this to this theme that you have. I like yeah. that. But I, I, I guess uh, I guess it just didn't turn out in that in the gameplay for me that well mm-hmm. I think, like, well, even even down to like the weapon you use now yeah is, yeah is completely open-ended there's like there's like three move sets technically with all you get like all these unique weapons but all, there's only like three move sets you know there's like yeah. the yeah, way the yeah. big swords hit the way the uh like a pokey weapon hits and the way a street sword hits and that's like it <laughs> i think like if, I, th- I think it comes across like they lean so much into like the casual kind of perspective. And I don't mean casual like, oh, you fuck casual, but like the, you know, you play on the bus because like, the, you know, the Switch yeah, is a handheld like pick console. up and play. Yeah. yeah. So they, they the shrines are very much built in a way where it's like you, you can pick it up, play on the bus for like 10 minutes and then maybe knock out a shrine, maybe two or whatever, and then put it away. And you don't have to like readjust yeah, and figure out where you are. For sure. And that- yeah. I, I very much like those experiences that you kind of can immerse yourself for a while. So when I'm playing Breath of the Wild like that, I'm not getting as much as I did with like a, a Majora's Mask kind of game or something. Or oh, for sure, yeah. Even even the Shadow of the Colossus, I guess, is a, a good example because Shadow of the Colossus is relatively fucking like barren, right? Like there's yeah. not nearly as much to do in Shadow of the Colossus as uh, Breath of the Wild. But like for me, it just resonates so much more because like the things that it does kind of give you, it, you're able to like kind of ruminate on it as you're playing the game. You're thinking like, why am I doing this? What exactly is happening? What? Who is this person? Who is this character? Why am I doing it for this person? You know, all that kind of shit. And you're just like kind of forced to sit there and kind of think about it while you're going across this like barren landscape, essentially. So that almost becomes part of the gameplay. Um Whereas like Breath of the Wild is is very much built, and I, I I do I do think like Breath of the Wild was like I always kind of say is like a good like alpha game state, like if they mm-hmm. had used that and then make like made Tears of the Kingdom and like almost made more of a add more like Majora's Mask to that game. That's where, what like, I thought what it was it was going to be because that's I agree with you exactly. Like when I played Breath of the Wild, I was like this feels like a good template for a great game. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. like it feels like they worked really hard on building this physics engine and this, I like, like this idea of play and they just needed to fill it in with the other stuff. But I, unfortunately for me, I feel like with tears of the kingdom, it kind of feels like they just kept leaning more into the, 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 the elf, the, the alpha state stuff. Like, Oh, here's more, here's more ways you can basically play Minecraft. You can craft a thing. Like they kind of leaned more into it. And I, I, I was hoping they would lean more into like, Let's just, we already made the like alpha state. Let's just throw a bunch of cool shit in there now. But I feel like with mm-hmm. Tears of Kingdom, they kind of just said, hey, people like that you can do whatever you want. Let's let them make robots and shit, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's interesting because I think we have very like similar taste, at least like mm. in like, because like you watch your videos, you're making a lot of references to like Witcher 3 or Zelda. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff I would make references to if I were talking about those subjects. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm curious, like, why you feel like you're drawn to these shows and these games? Like, do you have like a kind of idea of like what is it that you value in in games and in, in anime that you're kind of drawn to? Is it um, was it like the vibes and like the the aesthetic? I guess I think is that what you said the ambience. Atmosphere. atmosphere atmosphere yeah 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 that that that's something that like i've always liked but i, I guess i never like it literally took a youtube comment like telling me recently that like like i think it said something like man i feel like this guy he doesn't just like atmosphere it's like part of everything he does it's part of his channel it's part of the way he talks it's like it's like oh yeah i, th- I think that's a big thing for me i love games with like same with anime. I love anime and games that just have like this thick coat of atmosphere. You know, Silent Hill, uh, Dark Souls is great at that. Zelda is great at that. So that that's definitely a big thing. 
I, I, I guess I haven't really fully came to terms fully on what like I really like from anime or like what kind of anime I like. I've noticed that like the ones that resonate with me the most are anime where after I finish them, it almost feels like euphoric. Like I figured something else about myself. Like it like helped me figure something out in a sense. Like when I finished Vinland Saga, I felt like I like became a better person. Like I feel like I, I found something else about myself. Same with like uh, Avatar. I call them like life changing shows where like after you watch them, you feel like you just want to do you want to do better in life. You want to you want to you want to clean mm. your room. Finally, you want to <laughs> you want to do something, you know, like, especially if it hits like like emotional beats, like if it like hurt certain emotional beats for me uh, that that usually is like something I, I tend to enjoy. And I feel like when I look at like like some of my favorites, like Cowboy Bebop does that. Fooly Cooly does that. Uh, uh, especially if it's talking about like age and time like that, that, mm. that tends to like really get with me. Uh, yeah. Berserk. Uh, what else? Uh, and with video games. Uh, yeah. Atmosphere is a big thing. And I also like, I, I tend to like games that have like really engaging gameplay. And I think that's why, like I've always loved Zelda games, but uh, something that really drew me to souls was something I kind of felt like was missing from Zelda where I love Zelda games, but I always felt like the combat could do a bit more. It could be a mm. little bit more engaging. Like I'd fight this, it, especially, I felt that especially rolling. in Twilight. Yes. If you throw rolling in, I'm in. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when I was playing like Twilight Princess, which is one of my favorite Zelda games, uh, but it, it was missing that where I felt like I'd be fighting this boss and atmosphere wise, the bosses hit it out of the park. I felt like I was fighting. It's like, you know, David versus Goliath, this giant beast. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. It got me this feeling of like, I cannot wait to fight this thing. And then I'd fight it and then I'd fight and it'd be like the typical Zelda boss. You know, you hit it in the boo boo spot like three times once and then you whack it, rinse and repeat three times. And it did sure. it like there wasn't that. uh the, the word divine goods I don't know if I'm saying it right but that that feeling right. of like this connection of atmosphere to gameplay like there wasn't that it didn't, it didn't correlate there where I feel like that's the, that really worked with me in souls where like just being able to like a monster is about to attack me and I can dodge it and that happens in real time like he misses me in real time and then I can hit him back and I kind of have to like be really engaged and that's what i like i like really engaging gameplay i feel like that's something that i i really look for i was gonna say uh in, in twilight princess the the one fight i think it, maybe this is uh people different opinion but i feel like the best fight in that game is not a boss fight it is the goddamn dark nut fight oh, oh yeah. yes 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 i remember yeah, like yeah i remember playing that fight and it's uh, that's a really engaging fight it, it, like it yes. almost feels souls like and i remember yeah, my it brother does, yeah yeah and my brother was there watching me play it and uh he was he was also saying something along the lines of that like damn they need more fights like this and, yes uh, yeah. and honestly honestly a lot of twilight princess you're not fighting a lot of dudes you're fighting a lot of big old monsters yeah you're fighting a lot now of moblins like just yeah just like little yeah. gremlin guys with like the poker yeah. sticks you're not doing these yeah. these duels essentially which yeah yeah like when he like when you knock off all of his armor and then he pulls out the rapier and it's like oh mm -hmm. I'm about to get my shit fucked up yeah and, and you can still do that with like big monsters like Souls has definitely done like ever oh, since yeah. Artorius Souls has tried every subsequent Souls games is like how can we turn big monster fight into duel like Artorius fight like yeah. they, they, like every every fight like even the uh, what's her name Renala is it Renala that fight in Elden Ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it the, starts, uh, the, the wizard it, lady. Yes, it starts off as that typical like uh, puzzle fight that they always do. Yeah, where, like you, you, you do a fight, thing yeah. three times. Yeah. And then afterwards, what does it become? A basically dual fight, kind of like Artorias. Yes. They, they've really leaned into that because they've noticed that like people like those fights. It's a right. little sometimes it's a little to the detriment. Like, like I, I will say there is something to like about Demon Souls and the way how every fight was unique and different. Compared mm -hmm. to like nowadays where almost every fight feels like a notorious duel and it kind of right. lost the the I still prefer those fights ultimately because while they aren't as like surprising, like you're not going to get as much of a surprise. You're like, OK, time to roll at the right time and time to hit at the right time. Uh, mm -hmm. Replaying them, I feel, feels more fun because it's more engaging as a fight. Like I like fighting the Iron Giant. Was it? Sorry, what was his name in Demon Souls? Iron the big Golem? guy. 
Oh, Iron no, Golem? Golem Demon Souls. No, that's Dark Souls Demon 1. Souls. Yeah. Whatever uh, his name is, the big uh, giant guy. The, the uh, Isn't like a, call, pier, a pillar, pillar Knight? Something like that. Yeah, you have to like hit his head and we have to hit his feet to hit his head. That's yeah. cool. I feel like the first time, but like subsequently it doesn't it doesn't hit as hard. Like especially with like there's that one fight in Bloodborne where you fight the guy who like runs away from you. What's his name? With the the, the cage head? Oh, um fuck. Malakoff. That makes for like a really like good experience the first time, but upon like subsequent playthroughs, it's definitely not as engaging. Yeah, like as, like, as like in Dark Souls three, where it's like, all right, let's do the thing three times. Yeah, like maybe as a first time thing, it's a cool like moment, but afterwards, like, yeah, it's not as engaging as like I, I can always do a artorius type fight and have fun. Yeah, so I guess I, can that, I understand. The the, yeah. Yeah, and I guess that's why they... That one's really good, though. That one was, like, a good way to shake it up because it is an Artorias duel, but the movement of the dancer is so, like, oh, yeah, off yeah, yeah, kilter yeah. and weird. They need more of that where, like... You want okay, to talk about, like, atmosphere the, in, in Dark Souls fights. I feel that like that too. might be my favorite example of, of, like, an atmospheric fight. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, the dancer is one of my favorites. Like, I, that's yeah, one of my yeah. favorite boss fights. Especially because yeah, you spend I, the entire fight just looking at her ass. And like, hell yes. yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, no. no. Um, yeah, like, it was interesting because when I played Dark Souls the first time, it made me kind of reevaluate games in general. Because, mm-hmm. like, I thought about, like, how, how I enjoyed Dark Souls and, like, how I, what, how it kind of, like, changed my perspective on a lot of other games is like because like i was thinking like oh for the minute to minute gameplay of dark souls i'm invested right for sure yeah you're not able to like kind of turn it's not like a skyrim or a fallout where you can turn your brain off and just like walk and then like it'll like remind you with some music like hey there's combat about to happen and then you know oh okay like you have to pay attention the whole time so you're always kind of engaged and i started thinking like those about like other games game. yeah kind of um so i started thinking about like other games like uh like that i really enjoyed like red and blue and mm. start thinking oh, about Pokemon. like how yeah and start thinking about how like i i what like probably 40 percent of the time in, in red and blue i'm just kind of like checked out like, yeah, in, yeah. in pokemon games in general because i mean that's just kind of the nature oh, yeah. of it you're just like kind of walking you, you, around you could literally just tap A through everything and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Another one another one that made me kind of reevaluate was uh, Stalker. Um, mm-hmm. When I finally got around to playing that, I, I Fallout 3 was like always kind of an outlier where it's like I didn't really like it as far as like the construction of it as like an RPG. It was always like the, the collecting and kind of like plotting out like, okay, I'm going to do x y and z so i can get every single item in this quest line and stuff like that and just like kind of exploring like the the environmental kind of storytelling of a fallout um Mm -hmm. where like i didn't get that nearly as much out of uh fallout 4 so like i just i i've come i've basically just come to realize like fallout 3 is just like a complete anomaly in bethesda's catalog for me <laughs> fallout, <laughs> until, fallout 3 and morrowind are like the two outliers everyone points to yeah but, uh, until i can like play morrowind in a way that is not gonna filter me because it's fucking dice rolls in the background um <laughs> fallout 3 is the, the, the game, outlier the game functions on chaos yeah <laughs> um so like that Cause like I, I always liked Fallout Three, but I never liked it for the same reason I like New Vegas. And then, mm-hmm. in a weird way, like Stalker kind of scratched the same itch and kind of made me reevaluate some of the stuff I liked about Fallout Three, where it kind of like, I guess I'd say like hampered some of my enjoyment of Fallout Three, because now I'm like comparing it to Stalker in some way. Um, I feel like Dark Souls and Stalker have both kind of done that for me in some capacity for various reasons, I guess. It's it's always interesting to kind of like take your perspective and like what you take away from like shows that you watch later on and see how that kind of impacts either your enjoyment or like your appreciation of like shows that you watched earlier on, um, which we started we, we so Lex our friend our buddy shout out to Lex Torius we uh, mm. have been watching um, 
shit his server because he's been trying to watch more anime lately. And so he's basically just been going through a bunch of stuff that's basically on my favorites. And I was mm. like, ah, oh, this is a good chance for me just to rewatch fucking Fully Cooley and Madoka Magica. And it's it was interesting to me from like Fully Cooley because I guess like the way I've engaged with it for so long has just been through like clips, I guess, like almost like the Family Guy funny moments thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like <laughs> Fully Cooley I funny moments. That's like the, that's it, the best way to consume Family Guy now to me. Like I, oh, I, I tried yeah, watching funny, funny a Family Guy then, episode and I just mm-hmm. I couldn't watch it. And then but when I watch it on a clip, it's the funniest show ever. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess like it's like, like, like new Family Guy, though, is just basically Family Guy funny moments. Yeah, but I guess like fully coolly, sure. I've kind of consumed a similar not really like the same, but like just like because I'll, I'll watch. Like it's so tied to like the pillows, right? And I'll listen to the pillows a lot. Mm-hmm. And then like you'll you'll see like clips or whatever, or like I'll just remember the scenes vividly because they're so like integral with the song. Where like when we rewatched it recently, I was like, Yeah, I basically just feels like I watched it last week. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is an experience I've not really had with like other shows. Like mm. it's just it was just a weird kind of experience of like I haven't watched the show since Cy watched it for the fucking first time oh yeah a few years ago yeah yeah that was like three years ago I think something like that yeah but like it felt like I just watched it like two months ago or something yeah just like what the fuck (laughs) so it's it's kind of similar to like how we're watching uh we're actually watching re-watching Evangelion right now yes and we're because like they're doing the the end of Ava movie in theaters um, this is gonna date where we're recording it, but they're doing it in like a couple weeks, I guess. So we're like yeah. watching the episodes, kind of as the as the uh, broadcast version. Yeah, as they were originally shown on Japanese television, so it doesn't have any of the changes made for the home media releases or like what basically people saw outside of Japan. Um, it's been interesting. Mm. Well, it's it was funny because when we started watching it that way. I basically was just like, this is basically every experience I've had with Evangelion. Oh yeah, just watching in <laughs> shitty quality. Well, because yeah, because like I watched it, on, that, I watched it probably three or four times on like Adult Swim and reruns, um, and so it was kind of just that you know broadcast standard kind of quality, right. standard definition quality, I should say. Um, and then like the only way to watch it for the longest time was on DVD. I never actually had like a full proper watch through of the Blu-rays. So <laughs> we started watching it this way. I'm like, wow, this is this is actually super interesting because this is just literally how I've always watched Evangelion. So I started just watching it <laughs> alongside the Blu-ray release just so I could like see the differences like in real time, I guess. It's always it's it's interesting to kind of like consume media in different, I guess, different ways and different perspectives and stuff. Mm-hmm. That that comes up with me too because I, I I'm someone who really like watches like I think I told you last time I really like watching reaction videos and I feel like oh, that yeah, yeah. is a way like like um because I, I I like uh, with anything I like like if I'm gonna listen to an album for the first time or if I'm going to watch a show or play a video game I I always feel like uh, it's always beneficial to like if I liked it the first time I just I tend to like listen to it again like immediately i tend to like i i feel like i go through media very slowly like whenever Mm. i play a game i tend to play it like two or three times because i've noticed that like in general too like the more you experience something you pick up on things you didn't notice like and i I feel like that's a a way to do that without like just directly watching the show again is for me i love to like watch a show and then like watch a reaction of that show and kind of see what like what they're saying, huh? what are they picking up on and what, what that I maybe didn't notice and things like that. It, it's been a yeah. that's that's like one way I, I like to like see a different perspective of, of a show. So and yeah, I, like, that's why I love reaction channels like shout out. I think a uh, channel called uh, your boy Roshi, just uh, this guy, his girlfriend and his friend. They all react to a lot of anime. And like they, their reactions are some of the best, in my opinion. They they, they do great reaction content. Well, I think we want. I, I think that's why I watch the YouTube content I do is is to get that different perspective and different insight into like different, uh, like very similar to like why you like watching uh, reaction stuff. 
because like it obviously you're I'm con- you're constrained to your personal experience and like what you can see right like I'm not I don't have the life experience of somebody you know a, a woman living in uh Thailand or something so like she might have things that are a different priority to her and her life experience that when she's watching uh, fucking Monica Magica that stand out to her and she can like expand on those and like share that perspective that I would never even think of. Right. And like watching somebody a- able to like vocalize and share that perspective where they're like, Oh, this is why I like this show. And like such a, dis- a succinct way that, gives like that kind of insight is always so valuable to me because it's it allows me to like not even if it's like a negative one because like evangelion everybody like that's such a fucking divisive show like Mm -hmm. so many people will fucking shit on that show granted a lot of the criticisms are just the fucking same so it's just like but like sometimes you'll have someone that's like oh i don't like it for x y and z reason or something and it's something that you wouldn't ever like pick up on you're like oh that's interesting that like somebody would not like it for that reason. You know what I mean? Like, it's not always like a positive thing, but it's, it, it does still kind of increase your appreciation because you are at least able to like view the show that you appreciate so much from a different perspective. Now. Um, I definitely think like that's the most valuable thing of like watching other people's content for me is getting that different perspective. Um, so it was kind of hard thinking of things to write up about like what like anime specifically other than like stuff that you've talked about so like what mm-hmm. what would you say is like your top 10 anime ah oh, jeez that's a question <laughs> cuz like you- I'm, i i care about top 10s and i always want my top 10 to be bare like i when you showed me your uh, mal i think it was right and uh uh-huh. i was like oh this is such a cool top 10 just in the sense of like i look at it i'm like this seem, doesn't seem like a guy who is trying to like, you know, those people who make top tens and they're like, here are the like objectively good stuff. If I put it in here, I look kind of cool. A lot of film people do that. They'll be like, oh, oh yeah. I got, yeah, you know what I mean? Like I got, I got to put Shawshank Credential in there, you know, shit like that. <laughs> You'll do that with music too, even. Yeah, for sure. Neutral Milk Hotel. Uh, so that's why like, <laughs> I, I, I'm still in a phase of like, I'm trying to like, watch more anime and like really come terms to what I like, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not like fully sure what my top 10 exactly is in terms of like numbers. I know shows for sure that like come to my head when I think of like some of my favorites, uh, a lot of Watanabe stuff. Like I love Cowboy Bebop, uh, Samurai mm-hmm. Champloo and Space Dandy. Like those shows all like did something for me like really well, especially like, like the whole, um, Cause I, I see myself as a, as an absurdist. Like that's kind of how I look at life. I, and there's this moment in space and space dandy is a very absurdist show. There's like this moment where dandy is like kind of distraught because he got cloned by this like alien who cloned him so well that even the alien forgot if he's the clone or if he's not. And for a second, dandy's just like very like sad and depressed and like existential about it. And the next second he's like, who cares, baby? And I'm like, bro, that's me. That's me. That's 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 the life of an absurdist. And uh, I, I really liked uh, Dandy for that. That so those, those three are for sure in there. Um, There's a new show coming out, doesn't he? Yeah. What is it called? Uh, like, Lazarus. Labyrinth. Oh, Lazarus. 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 I think it has like yeah. the. Um, I think they also have like the guy who's like the like action director for like mm. the John Wick movies. Yeah, yeah. He's also working on that. So that'll be. That'll be interesting to see. I don't know if that's ever like anything, a collaboration like that has really happened with anime before. Do you know if, um, if it's going to be his tip, you know how he usually does episodic shows? Is he, is that, do you know anything about that? If it's going to be episodic? No, I I honestly have no idea about much of it. I'm literally now just looking at the stat page and learning that Kamasi Washington is doing the music for it. Mm, What the fuck? Interesting. That's, I, I always worry about jazzy. I always worry with Watanabe stuff because he tends to do, you know, episodic stuff. It's kind of his style. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. I like that. I get it. But like, I often feel like whenever I show um, Watanabe stuff, like I show my friend who is kind of a newer fan to anime. He didn't like like anime like early, like growing up with it like I did. He kind of came into yeah. it around the like Attack on Titan, Jujutsu Kaisen, these shows that are Demon Slayer, these shows that are very like 
we have a linear path we're going down and we're just going to like kind of like very fast paced shows. I feel like newer anime tends to be very like fast paced in that sense. Yeah. And Bebop mm-hmm. is not just episodic. It's very slow. It's very like, oh, yeah. 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 And I remember showing it to him and he told me he thought it was boring. And that kind of gutted it's, me for a sec. And I'm I like, can, I, I worry say, about well, it's like, a show I almost put on to like fall asleep to. It has like that kind of um, almost like a relaxing energy to. I mean, it's, it's certain yeah. episodes, not so much, but it, yeah. it's like, I don't know. There's something about yeah. how cool it is that I'm just like, yeah, for sure. The, 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 the vibes, the vibes would be. Yeah. About, yeah. Yes. I, I, yeah. But uh, so I, I do. I was wondering that about his new show, if it's going to be episodic. I, I hope people will. I don't If it is, I, I do worry a bit because. It, even the, like Space Dandy was such a monumental show because it had all those different directors and yes, all these like yeah. new people coming in. And I feel like it didn't really get the love. It it like no one really talks about Space Dandy as much anymore. Would you guys agree with that? Uh, yeah, it's not anymore. I mean, it was big. I mean, we fucking played on Toonami when it came out. Yeah, it was, but it was I feel really, like it was really popular for I a don't... period there. And now it's like falling off almost. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't feel like it was that big like obviously it was big enough that it was on Tadami and shit but like yeah it never like, felt like it yeah. was like on the level of like a bebop or something yeah when it was airing. like i don't think the same way that maybe like years after bebop and even champloo came out people still talk about those shows in very right. like in those ways i i feel like there wasn't as much impact despite i think space again space Day is one of my favorites i think it's a peak ass show but it, yeah I, I wonder if it was partly because a lot of new anime fans are more used to like shows that are fast paced and linear the same way how JJK is and Demon Slayer. Yeah. Like a lot of new anime Chainsaw Man is, is like that too. Right. And yeah. I guess so like I, uh, with Watanabe's recent stuff, it has been a little bit more like Terran Resonance wasn't really episode. I mean, it was, it was kind of mm. episodic, but it was also had very much like a dry, a very clear driving conflict throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, that was. Um, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Mm. I think Space Dandy is one of those that, like, it'd be interesting for me to go back to now, having like, because I was thinking about this after we, we watched uh, Crusher Joe the movie recently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh nice, um, nice. Which that's a that's a big influence on Cowboy Bebop, but yeah. like, it's a space adventure kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So like, it started making me. I started thinking about that and like Space Cobra and Dirty Pair and stuff. And I was like, you know, it'd be interesting to like go back to Space Dandy having watched these shows now and seeing like how that might change my perspective. Kind of like uh, watching Idion or uh, Devilman Crybaby or something might change like some of your perspective on uh, Evangelion or End of Ava. Right, right. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I guess we'll see when that show comes out, and uh, I wonder how it'll do if it is an episodic thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, those three are definitely in the back back to the top ten. Those things are in there. Fully Coolies in there. Uh, Gurren Lagans in there. Gynax uh, Staples. Yeah, Berserk. <laughs> uh, Berserk ninety seven. Uh, I really mm. like that. And a lot of that too, because I mean, don't get me wrong, Berserk 97 is a really great 90s anime, but I think a lot of it also comes from me loving the manga so much and that being sure. just a really great adaptation mm-hmm. of that arc. Uh, so that's yeah. probably in there. Uh, Steins Gate is in there. Uh, that that show went, meant a lot to me. Um, where am I at? Like is that five or six? No. Seven, I think. I think that's seven. Okay, okay. Uh, trying yeah. to think what else. Uh, I gotta find my three by three, man. I remember that I gotta, I, I feel like Vinland Saga is probably in there now. It probably like just came in there after I finished it. After, like that, after that, season two, yeah. Yeah. yeah season yeah, two, sure. season two was like, I don't remember if we talked about this or if we talked about this with somebody else, but like everyone fucking sh- like shitting oh, yeah. on season two that was because us. that was us. Oh, yeah. We yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was one of the things that like, took me away from watching it. Like I, I almost didn't watch it because everybody said like season two was the slog. And then, you know, I'm watching the anime. I'm like, oh, season one's really fucking good. This is a great anime. What a great yeah. ending. And then I'm watching season two. And as each episode goes by, I'm like, when does this get boring? Because like, I feel like I'm watching peak episode after it's, peak well, it's, episode. It's what you're talking about with Cowboy Bebop, where people expect yeah. that sort of like really driving plot. With Act, and a lot of action. And yeah. Yeah. And now it's just going to be people talking on a <laughs> far. 
and it's like some of the most like the best character arc uh, I've ever seen. Yeah. And it, and I, like when I finished it, I was like, I feel like I just watched one of the best animes I've seen in like in a decade. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it was such a great. I I don't know how they're gonna top that season, honestly. I mean, if they can even get so close to how good that season is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, that's a peak show to me. But yeah, that that definitely made me angry that like people like <laughs> were saying it wasn't good. Like that that's now. Oh, and then God. you watch it, and you're like, what the fuck were people smoking? <laughs> yeah, See, I guess that just goes to show like how fucking disconnected like I am at least with like yeah. everyone else's experience because it's like when I watched season one, I thought it was fine. Like I thought it was good. Like. Obviously, there was nothing like complaining about production wise or anything like that. Um, but it, I just it didn't do much for me because it's just like it's the prologue, I guess. Like it's just like yeah, mm. you know, you have I I I went into it expecting like this grounded Viking story, I guess, because I've just always fucking had this romantic idea since I was in high school when I like learned about the Vikings fucking rubbing fish oil on the bottom of ships to push them over hills and shit. Mm -hmm. Like I've always had this like romantic idea of like, Oh, they should make a a grounded Viking story. That would be really cool. And then I thought Vinland saga was going to be that. And then you get to fucking Thorfinn or the Thorkel Thorkel throwing fucking Thor- yeah. trees like yeah. being Viking Goku you're just like throwing oh. a spear across a field and like stabbing three people like a shish kebab just like yeah <laughs> and it's like so like once that and, and then like it started going into the politics a bit and you're like oh okay I guess they're kind of ramping up and then you know they're they're plotting out all this stuff like how they're gonna outplay the king and all this stuff and then it just kind of goes out the window because they just end up killing him and it's like oh None of that stuff actually matters. Because, like, it's not the plotting of it that's the political intrigue, right? It's the actual implementation and seeing the the nuances and stuff. So, like, people are like, oh, mm-hmm. it's such a political, dense kind of anime. Like, it does that. And you're just like, oh, well, that's a, a letdown. But then you yeah. get to season two where, like, you're past the prologue. And now it's actually... It's all contextualized that now because now I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, you needed, you needed that first to have season. That. Yeah, yeah, you, you needed, needed to, to you needed the context of like Viking Goku and these larger than life figures doing this shit because now you're seeing the context of like Thorfinn and where he was and what yep. he was kind of up against, and now he's just a husk of his former self and just allowing himself to just be literally enslaved to these people. Yeah, that he would you know, normally you would just fucking just kill or whatever. So it, yeah. it, 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 it was mental, especially cause when you think of Vikings, like it's always like the, the lore and um, the big, like larger than life tales. So it's like, you kind of had yeah. to have that element to it. Um, that's, that's something I only was able to appreciate with season two. Once it started contextualizing it, like outside of that, cause mm-hmm. like season one, I was just like, okay, well, this is fine. But season two is like when it's actually got good as to me. For <laughs> sure. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, it, it's funny because like it, with with the story that he was trying to tell that this idea of like giving up on revenge and realizing there's more to life and, you know, appreciating life and all these things. It's funny mm-hmm. that like it, it's almost like that if you're trying to tell that story Vikings are so like it's like the perfect vessel for that story because like you think about that scene when Thorfinn's like I'll take a hundred of your punches and like afterwards the guy like falls and he's like you are a true warrior that only like if you did that in real life you're like I'll take a hundred punches like dude I'm not gonna punch you a hundred times it works there (laughs) because Vikings are so honor based so the yeah. fact that they have, the, and you learn that in season one, you learn about their culture and like how they see life. And because you understand that's what they're like, that scene can exist and it can work so well because of their the way they are, the way Vikings are. For sure. Yeah. Like it's definitely a show that could only exist as it is. Like, I guess you could do a live action of it, but like, mm. Mm. I don't know how that would oh, work. <laughs> I did, I'm picturing, but like, I'm imagining the live action adaptations of Full Metal Alchemist. No, mm. how, I'm not, <laughs> no, I wouldn't think they'd well, go that direction. Okay, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm talking I'm talking about like how like Japanese live action adaptations of uh, manga generally yeah. tend to be. Mm. I, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, more yeah. like the the rumored Gilmore del Toro monster TV oh, series for like yeah. HBO. 
that thing that that was never gonna happen. <laughs> it was totally in the works. It was totally gonna happen at some point. I, or, or I guess what you you want is uh, Vikings that History Channel show. Oh yeah, the plot <laughs> the plot of Vinland Saga. Yeah, the plot of Vinland Saga. Yeah, I I, exactly. I almost feel like when like uh, specific with that scene where how Thorkel is kind of like you know because I feel like Vinland Saga. I guess you I guess it pretty much is historical fiction. I I feel like. When I when like Thorkel does all this like crazy shit with the tree and shit, I, I I'm just guessing that um I'm not familiar with the name of the mangaka, but it almost feels like he because you know like when you read about history, they tend to embellish shit. You know, they tend to be like, yeah, they probably wrote that Thorkel was so strong he could lift yes. a tree, and the and the, and yeah. literally like he took that and made it literal. And I actually really appreciate. Right. Doing it in that way, I think it made the show really well. Like it helped the show a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, Yuki Mura is the is the manga, and he's he okay. does a good job at like um at taking historical elements and he, clearly being aware of like the history of of the story he's telling, but yeah. then also not 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 strictly adhering to it. Like Vinland Saga is obviously not a like a historical retelling of events that actually happened, and it does a good job of of uh, of sort of balancing those two without and also making it seem like it's a, it's like trying to sell you a historical narrative that actually happened. It's very clear mm. like this is this is still a work of fiction, but then it's it's still grounding that fiction in real historical fact, uh, which is what which is something I appreciate. Also, I appreciate that with um, uh, Planetes as well, how grounded. Uh, that that series is in terms of the sci-fi elements of the story and the uh, logistics of getting rid of trash in space. <laughs> uh, Planet is probably the most like grounded sci-fi, really, because it's just like it takes place what probably like twenty years take- time frame away from like technology wise away from us. Like, uh, so it takes place in twenty seventy and. The idea is by the point this point, you know, we have a colony on uh, on the moon. We have, I believe, a colony on oh, Mars, yeah. and we're exploring like uh, the moons of Jupiter at this point. Um, I was just thinking like, the uh, the the orbital kind of travel, like right, right, travel right, time. Right. Like I'm pretty sure we have that. It's just I don't think it'd be commercially done for another. Right. Well, that's that's know. kind of the interesting thing too. Is like we have all these like you know we have like the space travel stuff, but at the same time, uh, it's not like we're living in like the world of. Uh, of Blade Runner or any sort of like fantastical sci-fi like Earth doesn't really look like that. Earth just kind of still looks like it does today still. Yeah. Mm. Which is interesting. Uh, yeah. Planet is fucking awesome. Speaking of that, I remember like when I was like doing the back, I, I talk about this in the backgrounds video, but there was definitely a point when I was like, like uh, if you look back at the world of Bebop, it is a little scary how like if we do colonize space, I feel like it will be like Bebop where like mm. in Bebop uh, Earth is unhab- unhabitable because um, as, uh, I think it was the United States. The United States, they wanted to obviously they, they started with the satellite like they wanted to make the first like uh, what is it called? A space gate. Yeah, they're making a space yeah. gate. They yeah, fuck yeah. up the moon and then it like kills billions. And then the only option from there is to like just focus on space colonization instead of fixing the problem. Yeah. And then, like, basically only the people who were wealthy enough to leave start leaving and they can live in all these different places in space. And the only people left on Earth are people who just couldn't, like, afford to leave. And they're just right. stuck there in this unhabitable planet living underground and shit. And it's like, holy shit, if, if Elon gets us to colonize space, I think I think we're <laughs> fucked. I think I think that is going to be our, our, our reality. I would say a lot of sci-fi series just seem to hate Earth. Like, uh, another example is... Uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Earth is not like a really much of a factor in Legend of the Galactic Heroes. It's not one of like the major planets. It's not a big population center. Mm. Uh, it's actually an object of religious worship in the context of the show because it's like this abandoned planet, and there mm. are these like Earth cult people who are like, "We need, we need to return to Earth." Mm. Um, <laughs> that would happen. Like too. A- that would so happen. It's, it's a funny thing, I guess, to see an anime uh, or just sci-fi in general. Where it's yeah. like, yeah, Earth, Earth, Earth isn't really a thing anymore. It's like, what I, do you mean? I, I love how uh, Bebop's with Bebop is always in the background too. Like um, one of the little moments, it's not like a big thing. It's just like something that like 
passing conversation where there's characters in Bebop who don't don't even know that there was life on earth. They don't eat like it's, it's things have changed so far that the idea of living on that people lived on earth at one point, is not even like registered in their brain? Like, I mean, I think it was someone who came from, who lived on Mars, who was born and raised on Mars. Didn't even know that. And it's like, that's, that's such an insane thought. And the fact that it's only in the background of this show is is, that's so cool. It almost lends credence to the, the ancient aliens. (laughs) (laughs) Just think how many oh, generations no, it would oh, take. Oh no, this for is you becoming to... a conspiracy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's funny because like I always think of um, Evangelion for that mm. because Evangelion a lot of a lot of the stuff that people try and look for are kind of in the background of the show. Oh yeah, it's just like sometimes it's not necessarily translated or they didn't. Just, just like, because, like, sometimes it's in like newspaper clippings and stuff, and they didn't translate the text or whatever. Um, but a lot of the background information about like how Earth, like, I think it's like two thirds of the population has has been wiped out by the flooding of Antarctica. Um, you have like the back, like, there's always constant like news broadcasts, like, yeah, on the radio or TV where they're talking about, you know, the war over resources in in different parts of the world in the Northern hemisphere specifically because the whole Southern hemisphere has been fucking flooded and it's just completely uninhabitable. Right. Um, so you have like all this stuff going on in the background and that's a large part of the show that people don't always pick up on again, because sometimes it wasn't translated. Um, like obviously there's some parts that are translated that they'll pick up on, but it's not every yeah. single instance. Cause it's supposed to be like this current, a uh, 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 constant barrage of this this doomer kind of information about like how fucking fucked humanity is at this point where you're supposed to have this kind of contrast of you know Japan which has been relatively I mean they had to move Tokyo I think at this point but it's been relatively untouched as far as like this war of resources and calamities have really gone outside of the angel showing up um but like they don't have to deal with all the the refugees and stuff like that that the rest of the earth is having to manage. So you have like this kind of almost normal life kind of going on. And then like in the background, it's just constantly just like 10,000 people were killed today in the bombing of this bubble, bubble, bubble. And it's just, they're just constantly being barraged with this like information. And then they just basically have just tuned it out. And it's just like Mm -hmm. in the background to them where it's such like a large part of the show. Even something like Pat Labor, like like the impetus for Pat Labor, the reason why the labors exist and therefore we need police with mechas is because of of global warming and rising sea levels. And we basically need to uh, build Tokyo out in order to prevent the city from basically ending up underwater. And in order mm-hmm. to do that, we need these giant uh, robot mechs to do the job. Yeah. You seem you seem to like Oshi's stuff, judging from your uh, backgrounds video. Because oh yeah, along yeah, with yeah. Cowboy Bebop, the two that you talked about the most, I think, were uh, Ghost in the Shell and Angel's Egg. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And I have a Basset um, Hound, so oh, you, you <laughs> invented Basset Hounds. Shout yeah. out, shout he out, in, Mamoru Oshi. He invented Basset. The Mamoru Oshi dog. Basset. I was so proud of that joke. Like that was like a big em- emphasis for making that video. I was like. I like Mm -hmm. wrote it down and I had it in my like, (laughs) I have like notes of like just random jokes that I want to say in a video. And I I had that written down for like a year. Like shout out to Mamoroshi for inventing Basset Hounds. Like ever since I got him, I wrote that joke down. I will tell this joke one day. And then I finally did it. Uh, And I felt really good. I remember watching the video and being like, oh, Mamoroshi dog. And then you you said that and I was like, hey, (laughs) (laughs) that was the goal. That was the goal. I even watched his, uh, I watched his movie about, have you guys seen, I think it's called, um, fuck, what's it called? It's like the movie, the short film about a basset hound walking a old, empty, like, like after a bunch of people died. Oh, street. The, the, the one with the French name? Yeah. Chetem. I think it's called Jetem, I'm pretty sure. And it's like just, yeah. everyone's dead except this basset hound and like robots from like the old civilization. Yeah. But but I, was, I, I assume you're going to, you're bringing up Oshi movie because, uh. He has schizo world building. Oh yeah, for sure, stuff. for sure. Uh, b- yeah, to, I don't know if it's the same reason that you're saying though, because like I, th- a thing I do appreciate about like Pat Liber is mm-hmm. like he kind of is like lampshading 
the idea of like real mechs, right? Because like Pat Liver is arguably probably the most grounded as far as mechs, because most of the mechs are just like, you know, kind of just construction equipment, right? They're not necessarily like giant robot, like humanoid looking yeah. things. The the labors are that way specifically because they're like it's meant to impose like this thing of authority. So they're humanoid for that reason, right? Mm-hmm. Um right. but he almost like lampshades like the the kind of um absurdity of there being like a real mech kind of thing by mm-hmm. by making this like show that's essentially the most realistic mech show to date. Yeah. And then throwing like the Loch Ness monster and dinosaurs in there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Just having absurd shit happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's just kind of like reminding you, like, yeah, this is cool and all, but this is still fantasy, guys. This is this this is not gonna right, actually yeah. happen. <laughs> See, I was thinking more along the lines of um uh the lore behind the, the world of Jinro and how oh, that's God. That borders on basically just like a like a, like there should be an iceberg video about the <laughs> lore of, of the Panzer Panzer Cop saga. Stay uh, tuned the for cover size of, video. Cover saga. <laughs> the Panzer of me saga. just like, like of me just like having like a schizophrenic break and talking about like the bottom of the of the uh, the bottom of the uh, iceberg will just be me rambling about how to scam fast food joints. <laughs> <laughs> That would be impressive because that would that would probably be a, an iceberg video that hasn't been made yet, which is honestly surprising. Yep. I remember like the, the, iceberg. I, the idea of making an iceberg video because I like, always thought they were cool. As like every every iceberg video, I feels like it's already been done, but you just you, you found it out right there. That's the iceberg. Yep, there video. we go. <laughs> See, we actually had an idea to do an iceberg video, but it was just going to be like an anime like a generic anime iceberg video but it was just gonna mm-hmm. be like taking the piss out of it and we like we we don't, yeah, well, the joke would be like we don't know anything at the top of the iceberg but we are very <laughs> familiar with everything at the bottom like we're like i don't know i don't know what the fuck naruto is i haven't seen it <laughs> oh, <laughs> Matsu- Matsu- Rika, Rika, I, yeah, yeah. Shoujo Sabaki? Oh, hell yeah. I know what that is. Yeah. We're going to do like really bad like fucking summaries like Naruto Sabaki is the world's <laughs> best ninja in Ninja Town or some like <laughs> stupid <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. And we're going to have Kenny on, but he he ended up not wanting to do it. But it was going to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just him be like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? That, that's that would have been, that that's been a, a banger. That, that sounds like a great idea. I think you should go through with it. Talk about Naruto in the Ninja Town, Ninja City, Ninja City, the Hidden yeah, Leaf see, City. Uh, are iceberg videos still still a thing? Do people uh, still watch iceberg videos? They're definitely so. yeah. They're yeah for they're sure. Not, they're not as big as they once were. Like yeah, a couple during years that, ago. Yeah, like when Wendigoon was making his like conspiracy theory one and all that. Yeah, like that, yeah. that was like peak iceberg. Like if you made an iceberg video, right. that's just gonna pop. But, I guess he did ju- literally just make a cryptid iceberg video last yeah, month, though. I, so I, I, I think they definitely will still do well. I think people like that yeah. format generally. Right? Yeah, because well, it's, it's an easy. Yeah, it's it's the structure is in the iceberg image itself, and then yeah, it's just a, then an excuse to talk about a bunch of different things as a real. And the video because there's so much shit in the icebergs. Because there's yeah. so much shit in the icebergs. There's just like. Uh, a lot of the videos just end up being really long anyway. So you just put them on in the background. Oh yeah, for sure. Like for me, like I feel like the whole reason I wanted to make one was just like, I, I just, I do this a lot where like, I, I, I love choosing songs in my videos. Like I love connecting mm. music to what I'm talking about. I feel like it's a big thing in that backgrounds video. Like the reason why people like that one, but uh, yeah. I, I wanted to make an iceberg video simply so I can make the whole playlist or the whole soundtrack of the video a water-based video game music like only using water <laughs> video game music that's something okay. I, I love to do yeah. like i'm planning to do that with that video i told you about oh uh, i don't know if i said it in this podcast but i was gonna make a video about like time and how time scares me i was gonna talk about like mm. movies and shows mm. that deal with time and the goal was every song in the video is gonna have something to do with time either in the lyrics or the the title of the song like that, that shit's so cool. It's it's that it's that once again that Devon Kuntzkirk. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to just flash detail. a definition of that. Every yeah, time that's I gonna say. be uh, here's your, here's your weed crew word of the day. It's <laughs> in German. Take yeah. it away, cut out a buy. I'm not gonna try and fucking define that shit. Gesamtkunstwerk is an artwork produced by a synthesis of various art forms. You fucking bitches. 
but uh, you, you gotta you gotta have uh the chrono cross intro sound uh song in in that video oh yeah i i, I use that song is, is that the one i use in the background for i think so it's the one where you're like in the overworld right no i mean like the the title screen like the one that they oh yeah, yeah, do, yeah like yeah, the yeah, intro yeah. fmv oh yeah 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 that's such a fucking good song a lot of good water. I feel like water based themes might be some of the like best. It's either those or forest themes. Like those are like some of the best video game music. It's either going to be a forest theme or it's going to be a water theme. Yeah. You get the you get the bongos going for like Donkey Kong and the oh. jungles. Oh, my God. The Donkey Kong Country soundtrack. They that is the definition of like they didn't need to go this hard. They didn't need to. <laughs> like sometimes I see that meme and it doesn't make sense. Like or like they'll be like, oh, it's just a show. Of, like they'll be talking about like, I don't know, like fucking like Yu-Gi-Oh. They'll be like, it's just a show about card games. The OST didn't like, no, it didn't need to go that hard. It's not just card games. They're like, it's like the fate of the world. A dinosaur is fighting a satellite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like they didn't need to go that hard, but with, with, with Donkey Kong country, that is facts. Like it is a game about monkeys collect and collecting stuff. You didn't <laughs> need to make this like fucking like, like, I don't know how you would describe it. It's very like the soundtrack's very, um, psychedelic like 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 mm. oh my god well it's so it's such a good like there, there's like moments where like i'll hear that song and i feel like crying like holy shit yeah the it's it's been immortalized in in video essays <laughs> yeah because it, sure. it is one of the oh, yeah. better soundtracks um the one I, I think the one I, I i've seen like this clip going around like shorts and stuff lately but the one i always think of is like the like, the the pause menu soundtrack a uh, uh, song for uh, Goldeneye. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's huge right now. I I I'm like my algorithm got me into like these dudes who use um, Blender and they make like stuff now, but like they put it in that PS one low poly style, and it's always that <laughs> theme, and it's so sick that I love <laughs> that. It's so like they'll have like you at like a gas station and it's like a maruchan it's kind of like you know like in those ps1 games when you click on something it'll pop up like spinning and i'll be like do you want it yes or no like it'll be spinning like that you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah Yeah, it'll be like that with like a like a like a cup ramen at a gas station but it'll just be in that ps1 style so cool i feel like that that that's something i'm kind of working on now because i want to make a video about like old video game aesthetics where like Mm -hmm. you know you can make it's not hard to make the argument that pixel art is still good now. It's not like old. It's it's timeless. That's why indie games are yeah. so are so refreshing because th- they still use that style. It looks great. Um, but like the, you have to kind of work harder when you're talking about that that low poly PS one Nintendo mm, sixty four yeah. era because they were trying. They weren't trying to do an aesthetic. They were trying to make the game look as real as possible. And they didn't. It didn't come out right. that way. But I still think it made this aesthetic that I think is still loved. I, I often feel like, especially with like, you know, triple the triple A games now, because they ha- you know, triple A comes from like the the bonds they have to make. They have to hit certain quotas. Yeah. They have to hit the what is what is the most uh safest option? Game look pretty, basically. Yes. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So they, I feel like a lot of AAA games now, because they can look as real as possible, that's all they go for. And I, I kind of feel like we don't have to look at these older styles. Like we don't have to look at low poly as just a stepping stone. It, like that's what it felt like for years. Right. A lot of video game marketing is look how pretty our game is. So it kind of felt like these older styles are nothing more than just like stepping stones, but no, I think they're different aesthetics that can be used. Well, like you like, Oh my God, like seeing bloodborne. And I think bloodborne is a beautiful game as its own, but seeing it in that D make, have y'all seen the D make? Yeah. That, 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 make. Yeah. That, that's so cool. I feel like that the, uh, we, I think we talked about this. You guys shot me some games that you thought were really cool looking that, uh, that still kind of use that PS one kind of style. It's like, it, it, I think, I think there is going to be a resurgence of that. Yeah, well, yeah, I think you definitely are seeing that to that sort of um, for sure. Uh, uh, I guess the term now is boomer shooter type look to it. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, like the same way the one that comes to mind for me is. is like a yeah, yeah. Like what comes to mind for me is uh, dusk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember dusk being like a really uh, good example of that. Um, I think yeah, this this so, this sort of uh, old yeah low poly look. Um, it's definitely. I think it's. I think it's coming back as people 
it, it's it's almost like how people are be, are becoming nostalgic now for anime in the 2000s mm-hmm. where you know we we've hit that point this the, this stuff was over 20 years ago now so it's 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 uh that's that's where that's what our cultural interests are I feel like uh, becoming in terms of looking back in time you know the 90s are back the 2000s are yeah, back yeah I'm al- back baby I almost feel like cuz nostalgia has always been a thing but I feel like after the pandemic it feels like like, especially now, like, nostalgia has had more of a hold on media than ever before. Like, you look at fashion oh, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Fashion is just recycling, because I'm really into fashion. And a lot of fashion now is just recycling 90s and 80s fashion. Music, right, yeah. a lot of music uh, is recycling 80s music right now. And same with video games. God, movies. I can't wait to watch the new Ghostbusters movie. I mean, Joker. Oh, yeah. that, that new Joker movie oh, was yeah. just ta- ta- Taxi Driver, right? Like... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Was, yeah. Just yeah, very clearly like paying homage to like these. I mean, even before that, I mean, uh, I guess I guess Drive wasn't like the biggest hit in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's certainly become more pop. It's a movie that has had a lot of staying power, and that's also a movie that is very clearly. I mean, it has like the aesthetic of an '80s movie and like the the plot and pacing of an of a '70s movie. There's a movie. Uh that kind of captured that that I really love. I actually, I think I found it through red letter media was a uh, turbo kid. Mm, turbo kid. Y'all... Never yeah. heard of that. I, it's like, it's almost like a Mad Max. Um, hmm. But it's like playing on the, the nostal- like eighties nostalgia where it's like, instead of like, oh, I can definitely stuff, see that. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's like riding a bike around. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very, kind of like Mad Max kind of storyline. Mm. Uh, it's, it's very violent. It looks like it's like a, a kid's oh, movie. Oh, okay. It doesn't look oh, violent. Okay. Like these- yeah, you would <laughs> think that, but it's, it is very violent. Oh, um, okay. Uh, it, that, that re- what, this conversation reminded me of that. Is <laughs> it? I wanted- uh, I know, it it kind of reminds me of like uh, Kung Fury. I, Kung, Kung Fury. Fury. That sounds familiar. Oh here's man, a, you, oh, people here's don't a shot remember from Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> I might be thinking of Kung Fu Hustle, actually. I'm gonna be thinking of Kung Fu Hustle. Uh, no, Kung, <laughs> uh, remember like Triceracop? No, I don't Tri- think so. I don't think so. Man, this is like a. Oh, oh shit. Ah. Yeah, I can immediately see what you're <laughs> bringing that up. Yeah. Is that Hitler next to the tear? I was yes. going to ask. Is that kind of yes. looks like Hitler? Yes, it is. Okay, I, I was yes, worried I about that. asking. I was like worried, like, should uh, I ask if that's Hitler? Because that kind of looks like. <laughs> uh, you have, of course, Hacker Man. I love he Hacker Man yep, using yep. a Nintendo yep. Power. Let glow. me hack into the mainframe. Yep. Oh shit. It was neat too. Uh, it's only like 30, 20, 30 minutes long. Um, I don't think you. I don't think you've mentioned it mm. in any of your videos. Um. But do you have any kind of like anime merch? Anime merch? That that's honestly one part of like the anime being an anime fan that I feel like I'm kind of lacking on. I don't own a lot of anime merch. Maybe it just comes from me not having a lot of access to money growing up. I'm kind of like coming mm-hmm. into it now. But uh, yeah, like I have some. I have cool stuff, but definitely not a lot. Like uh, I have this one thing because uh, uh, I'm really into fashion and anime. So I got this uh, little. Uh, it's a tote bag. It's a collaboration between Akira and this fashion brand called uh, Como de Gorson. And it's like really mm. cool. I, 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 I wonder mm. if I could show it y'all, if y'all can post it up. I might have to like find it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me see if I can look it up and see if I can find it online. It's a bit of an obscure drop, but if you find it, it's really cool. I Well, actually, you know what? I do have anime merch in the sense of I collect a lot of vintage anime t-shirts. So okay. like okay. I have like a, a Devil Man T-shirt from the '80s. Like I think it's from those oh, OVAs. Really? Yeah, I have like that. I have this Fooly Cooly shirt that came out with the promotion of Fooly Cooly. I have like old Loot Crate shit. Not like from the actual. Like I didn't buy the Loot Crate. I got it like I got right. this Black Lagoon one for like ten years after. Uh, that that's where most of my shit comes from. I have like old '90s mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z shirts, like this one of Krillin, because I have always liked Krillin as a character. I always thought he was cool, mm-hmm. so I have this like really sick Krillin T-shirt. Uh, and I also clicked uh, video game ones too. Like I have this uh, PS One like Final Fantasy VII shirt. Uh, it's just like cloud on the back, and it, it's really cool. They're, like I, because I, I I love anime, and I always want to like show it off in how I dress, but. Oftentimes, uh, I don't. I tend not to like modern anime clothing in the way of like you go to a Hot Topic or a Walmart and it's just like 
you know, like a very like basic fitting Gildan tee and just like a right. yeah. yeah. And, but I, I realize uh, so usually what I do is I kind of try to dress like certain anime characters, characters like Yusuke or uh, uh, Takumi from Initial D is like someone that I really look to. But uh, I tend to find that older, like vintage pieces, like old, old pieces, they tend to look a lot better. And uh, maybe I don't know why, but yeah, older anime T-shirts, if you could find them, they tend to be really cool. I have been eyeing my like an Akira T-shirt for years because Akira vintage T-shirts are some of the coolest thing ever. But I remember saving them for like 300. It was 300 bucks at the time. Right. I save Mm -hmm. it. I'm like, I'm going to buy this once I get my check. And then uh, you guys know Travis Scott. <laughs> mm-hmm. He yeah. posted a pic wearing oh. one. I go oh, to the I'm fucking seeing, I'm thing. I'm seeing the pic right yep, now. Yep. And then the price just nine hundred dollars like, now. Nine hundred. Oh. Yeah. And I still fucking want it. It's the it's the shot of um, uh, Kanada walking up to yeah. the bike. It's that shot, and it's like a white t shirt. It's so sick. But yeah, that one is like a grail for me, and the Ghost in the Shell one. It's like the classic uh poster photo where it's like you know it's like the major mm, yeah. just with our gun and the glasses it's like that that one's also super expensive but those are some of my like grails when it comes to vintage anime tees i, I plan to make a video like showing all my vintage anime shit because like they're really cool shirts and i i think people who yeah. want to like show off their anime fashion taste i think that's a good way either like dress like certain characters especially like 80s 90s characters i think they have a really like easy style and like casual cool style and uh just vintage anime t-shirts are some of the best but let me say i'm still looking for the sakura i think uh, i forget what anime talked about this i want to say it was the anime episode of paranoia agent where they made a point that like anime shirts need to be designed such that they are wearable Meaning that you can wear the shirt in public and not get any weird looks. Because, I mean, you can put, like, a lot of, like, you know, like, horny shit on your shirt. But then no one's going to buy it because no one's going to be want to fucking wear that in public. Uh, So usually what, like, the idea is, like, you put, like, the logo down or, like, a post or something along those lines where it's, like, you know, it's not horrific gore, uh, like, from Akira or anything like that. Uh, It's something it's something that looks cool. Uh, rather than uh, terrifying or sexy, which is an interesting like, because I feel like yeah, you could do you could definitely do something on uh, anime t shirts in general and just like the philosophy that goes into designing them. Yeah, that um, that would be interesting to talk about, like the 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 the, the anime t shirt business and how it's changed and stuff. I was thinking of like the, I think Evangelion did a whole like promotion with like designer t-shirt companies and clothing. Evangelion lines. has done so many fucking like clothing promotionals. That's insane. Yeah. Like I think of like stuff like that, where it's not necessarily just like the character print. I, recently there was a, there was a pretty good collab between, uh, are you guys familiar with the Japanese brand uh, Uniqlo? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. So they did a, they're like a pretty they're like, I, 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 I don't want to call them the, they're like in terms of business, they're like the Walmart of Japan. But definitely right. not in terms of quality. In terms of quality, you're getting really good shit. Like if you want to look, because here's the thing, Japanese people, like the way they dress is just naturally cooler than like the typical oh, American. Yeah. To- Tokyo so, is like a massive fashion city. Yeah. So if you just get something from there, you're going to look cooler in general. And they did a yeah. collab with Shonen Jump. And a lot of cool shit came out of that one. I got this uh, shirt, which was one of the weirder collabs they did. It was Uniqlo collabing with uh, the. Have you guys seen the film Tenkan Kingcrete? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. They did I a collab with it. them. I own it on DVD though. Yeah, they did a collab with them, and I got this really cool shirt from there. Let me let me see if I can send that to y'all too. Give me a sec. I'm trying to find. Oh, here we go. Here's the yeah. Here's the Evangelion merch I saw the other day. Uh, I always like the like Evangelion like GPUs. <laughs> Like oh, guitar God, oh, like, pedals and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I so badly. I kind of want to get like that. Uh, it's pro- I don't even know if it's in production anymore. The Hatsune Miku guitar pedal. Oh yeah, no, I, my uh, friend of mine actually owns that guitar pedal. It seems. It seems. I'd, I'd be curious to figure out how to actually use it to make a song rather than it just being like a joke. Yeah, I think it's just more of a novelty the way he, that he's used it. Okay, the, the, there's the there's the shirt that uh, that I got. That's a cool yeah. shirt. Yeah, yeah, really oh, cool. That's, shirt. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that that that's something that I I would definitely like to like uh, not just talk about and show off because there is a lot of really cool like older 
I mean, this one's a bit newer, but there is a lot of cool older like anime T-shirts that uh, that you could definitely still get. And just definitely, if you're if you're trying to like have a good bang for your buck, definitely stay away from like Akira and Ghost in the Shell. Those are like going to be the Ghost most the expensive. Those are your grails. Those are the ones where like it's going to cost a pretty penny. So you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, a lot of people have made. Uh, you, you mean you yourself have made videos a video on fashion in anime i don't yeah. know of anyone who's really made i don't know of a lot of videos that talk about anime fashion though like oh like like, the, like the as, as like itself. the merch yeah 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 uh yeah, yeah definitely I've, not no one's really talked about the merch of anime that well I, I i've seen i follow a lot of um people on instagram who make their own anime merch in a sense mm. and they tend to always they kind of have the same argument or not argument but they tend to say the same thing i just said earlier well the, the, it always start as like hey i'm making a cool anime merch set but check it out you can wear it and not feel like a piece of shit you know because like a lot of anime <laughs> merch is like not they just completely here here's my power level for everyone to see like they they right. tend to go more subtle on the designs and kind of hide yeah, them. yeah 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 yeah, I think I think that would be a good video topic for you because, like, I I did ask the question because I was curious if you, like, I I know you had wear, worn some like anime stuff, mm-hmm. but I didn't know if you had like, if that was like a big because like I, I think a lot of people kind of pigeonhole like what it means to do like collect anime merch yeah, or see, like that's, that's, express yourself yeah when you asked it i was thinking like the typical like plushies and and things like that but uh yes yeah i guess i, I didn't even factor in my vintage anime t-shirt collection but i guess yeah that, that would be a thing that is probably the biggest in terms of anime merch is my vintage anime t-shirt collection <laughs> yeah i've like i do have a shit ton of figures like i have more than fucking most people probably yeah, uh, or the, that, 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 no, that's a money sink. <laughs> that's a money sink. Oh, for sure. But like, <laughs> I, I've kind of because like I don't, I'm not super. I do have like some Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man figures and shit now, I guess. But like, I'm not like super into like Naruto, Demon Slayer, all that shit. So I'm not like or Dragon Ball, which Dragon Ball is like probably the biggest money sink in, as far as like figure collecting. Mm. Oh yeah. Um. So like I, I get figures every now and then. It's more like something I get like once every other month or something, just 50 bucks on a figure or something here and there. Um, but like I've kind of more drifted toward like anime vinyls. Like mm. that's something I'm, I'm really interested in collecting. Oh, like I, I, that's cool. I, I remember I, I, I think not I didn't, I didn't collect any, but I remember like wanting a the Samurai Champloo and Bebop soundtrack one. And I was looking for those because I just like the music, but they're expensive as shit. Yeah. I did oh, yeah. get a Bebop one. Oh, um, nice. It was one of the more recent pressings. So it wasn't like it was like an, a, a, I, I don't really care about like the original so much a mm. lot of the time because I, I do like listening to them. So a lot of the newer pressings are usually a bit better anyway. Mm-hmm, for um, sure. But I do, I do collect like, uh, cause I do watch a lot of like older shows. So I do have like a like, Galaxy Express and Macross. Like, uh, oh, models. that's cool. That's cool. For me, it's kind of similar. I like um, I like laser discs because they're basically just the size of vinyl, but instead of music, it is the anime on a uh, format I can't watch because uh, I don't have a laser disc player. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever open them, they're then on a ticking time clock because they'll just die from oxygen. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, if you, you can still take good care of them. I actually have a couple unopened ones. I know, like, um, I have Pat Labor Two on laser disc unopened somehow it's kind of insane i almost bought that while i was in japan one time mm-hmm. i was like it was like 800 yen or something and i was like eh. yeah the price on the prices it. on laser discs honestly aren't too bad either for you you get a pretty good decent bang for, bang for your buck i probably made paid maybe 30 bucks i mean obviously that's more than 800 yen but as far as like physical media goes that's that's a pretty good price for something like that. I mean, I pay like 60 bucks for a Blu-ray in some cases. Y'all been to Japan? It's same. That's crazy. Y'all been to Japan? Yeah, I, I've been three times. I've, been I have, Japan. I've yeah. always wanted to go. What was it? Well, I think a lot of people want to go, but uh, what was it? Was it, did you have like a, I'm guessing you didn't have like a translator or anything like that. Like, was it hard as like an English speaker only coming in there? Uh, so I was dating someone that lived in Japan at the time. So ah. she studied japanese she was not japanese oh okay <laughs> uh, but she uh she could speak japanese so i didn't have to 
I did go around by myself, which Tokyo is pretty easy because uh, it's it's a pretty scripted language. Mm-hmm. So you really need to only pick up like a few handful of words to really navigate. Yeah. Um, because most of the time you go to a store or something, they check you out. They always ask you the same three questions in the same order. Yeah, so, yeah especially like people card? talking to you rather than having to fucking read the goddamn thing. Because holy yeah. shit, kanji. Yeah. No, it's 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 such it's so easy because like they don't Tokyo is like it, like they don't talk to you really right. Like they only talk to you when you're like like if you ever go there, mm-hmm. it's interesting to see like just the normal like citizens like going up to these places because like they literally will not look at the cashier and it's like such a weird experience for like me having like experience like just lived in the u.s and experiencing like our customer service i guess where it's like it's it's expected you're supposed to maintain this conversation Mm -hmm. and do this small talk you're like oh the weather's pretty nice today yeah (laughs) yeah but you go there and like they don't even look it's like new york city versus like small town you mean America. you don't? Yeah. You mean you don't conversate with all of them about their favorite anime? You, you're not <laughs> exhausting <laughs> their dialogue trees. <laughs> yeah. It would. I, I, it would be interesting to learn Japanese because, like, one of the coolest experiences we did was like we went to uh, some anime bars, mm-hmm. and like, I, I could, I can understand like maybe thirty-five percent of what people say in Japanese just based on like context clues, just because I've heard so much of the language. Mm-hmm. Um, but like having someone there to translate, like we could kind of, we would talk to the people at the bar cause they, that's when they're actually sociable is when you're at a bar, like in a social setting, as opposed to just walking around the middle of Tokyo. Um, so like they start talking to you like, Oh, you, you know, so much anime. What the fuck? You know who this character is? Like they start quizzing us on these people. <laughs> that was, uh, it's, it's fun to be able to actually talk to people. In that setting, cause like, I guess anime is like such a ubiquitous thing to them. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, just somebody coming and having this huge interest in like American cartoons or something. And you're like, Oh, did you watch fucking Foghorn Leghorn? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, that does sound cool. But yeah, like I feel like people really pigeonholed like, Oh, you just had to buy like anime figures. And it's like, that's definitely a large part of anime, but like, Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, I feel anime like merch, the cooler though. merch is like when people are doing like clothes or like, uh, vinyls or, um, even if they're like make like like garage kits or something. Or yeah, like, or like or like uh, just like Doge and shit. Yeah, like there's so much like way there's so many different ways for you to like express your fandom of anime, right? That it, it's kind of a shame that like everyone just thinks of like anime merch as like plushies and figures. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially yeah. with like like I'm trying to think of other cool stuff. Like uh how uh Slam Dunk has a Jordan, like a, a Jordan shoe collaboration oh, oh yeah wow. that's that's so cool that's that's so interesting to that's neat yeah uh yeah i guess we've been going for like three hours oh wow, <laughs> oh, wow. Um, i guess is there anything that you kind of wanted to touch on or talk about or anything for uh, we were kind of wrap things up I'm trying to think because we, we we covered some video game stuff we covered anime stuff oh you know what i didn't even finish <laughs> doing my top 10 i think i was two i think i had two left to go right Oh, oh yeah, 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 we got, we got Vinland sidetracked saga. by like Vinland Saga, yeah. Yeah, sh- sh- should I just say the last two to like have that closed? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. yeah I can close it out with that. I want to say the last two would probably be like Yu Yu Hakusho and uh, uh, Bakuman, the the one about making manga. Mm. Yu Yu Hakusho, just because like I, I mean, it's not it's not the perfect shonen. I I, I have problems with uh, that's one of those shows where it's like I have problems with it, like deep problems, especially like I, I mean, you're gonna have it with the last season the last mm-hmm. arc being kind of unfinished basically for health reasons. Yeah. But uh, ultimately what made it work was just the moments that I did love. I, I like love like nothing else. And the characters, like the characters are all, I'm a very character based guy too. That's another thing I really love. So like, mm-hmm. I just love that cast. That cast is like one of my favorite casts ever. So that made that, and that's what puts it in the top 10. And then the other thing would, yeah. And then Bakuman just cause uh, I love Bakuman when I first read it, but like, reading it again and i watched the anime too i think it came out in 2010 ish i want to say yeah 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 watching it reading it again after like actually doing something like having a dream like the characters did and trying to achieve that dream like i did with youtube made me appreciate that story even more so Mm. yeah those are definitely up there 
And I think that that would be, I don't know what order the top 10 is, but those are in it. <laughs> I think I can definitely see, um, cause like the whole like making thing, right? Like it, I always think it's back to like, uh, a talk into a video and stuff like that. Oh yeah, like yeah. That's a very key, key part. I forget who was it in, uh, the Moe manifesto. Um, I forget who the quote actually is from. Uh, I could probably look it up and we could probably have Kanata bot if Sai doesn't know off the top of his head. It was A.G. Otsuka, goddammit! But the the idea of like doing something yourself is almost like ingrained into otaku, like in, hmm. in Japan. Mm-hmm. Like expressing their fandom through figures. They didn't have figures, so they made garage kits. That, that's always kind of resonated with me as far as like making content myself because like that's kind of the you know, the whole ref like impetus for why I started making content was like, oh, the content I want doesn't exist. I'll just make it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely can see like if you kind of gained an experience with that through uh, through anime, because like you're making anime videos, then watching uh, something that's basically about that, like with Bakuman. Yeah, because they, um, they were trying to make what do they call it? A shonen series, a shonen battle series without battles. Like that's what their goal was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they made basically what what they made was. Ba- it's funny how when you watch that show, like you're you're watching them by the end basically make what is Death Note. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a, that was a really cool thing that I I really liked about that show. And another thing was just the characters. I also really liked the characters in that. There's some really good comedy in there. Like I remember this one scene. Have you all seen the anime too, but or have you just read the manga? I've I've started watching the anime. I'm only like twelve episodes into the first season, though. Oh, okay. There's How a, long there's did a you se- watch those first twelve episodes, movie? Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's twelve this, years ago, like comedy bit that happens in those first couple episodes. That I don't know why I always go back to it. And it makes me laugh. Just the performance of the voice actor, where um, ah, fuck, what's his name? Uh, the guy who looks like Light. What's his name? Tak Takumi Tak. Takugi? I think. Something like that. It's fucking Takagi! Jesus Christ! Takagi? 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 Okay, yeah. There's like a moment where like they're both in the nurse's office and he's like talking to uh, Mahito, I think it is. And uh, he's like, do you like love her or something? He's like, I mean, and he like explains like this deep philosophical thought about how he feels (laughs) about her. And Takagi's just like, (laughs) he just starts like laughing his ass off. And it's like, (laughs) it's, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, that, that, I really like that show. <laughs> um, I really love fucking Yu Yu Hakusho too. Like, <laughs> that's that's been one that's like I think that's probably one of the more formative anime for me. Mm. Um, weird too. We don't because, talk about like, it that much on the show. Hmm. We don't. I've I've mentioned it a couple of times. I feel like I think I might have mentioned it the first episode maybe. Um, because like that was the show. Like I went from Pokemon Digimon Dragon Ball and I guess Dragon Ball was kind of what led me to Yu Yu Hakusho but it was Yu Yu Hakusho that led me into delving deeper into anime Um, because how it happened is like I got into uh, Dragon Ball and then I saw Dragon Ball Z airing on Toonami or Adult Swim or whatever it was at night Mm. and then Yu Yu Hakusho came on after that Mm. and so I got into Yu Yu Hakusho that way and like it's it's interesting because it's it's always been like in the background for me. Mm-hmm. And it's always been something like I can kind of come back to, even though I don't have like the greatest reverence for it, I guess. Like it's not like a fully coolie or Evangelion for me where it's mm-hmm. always been like one of my favorites or something. But it's like it, it's not far off, I don't think, but it's it's always kind of been there. And like anytime I'm like, ah, oh, I kind of feel like uh watching this bit like i'll end up fucking just rewatching the whole fucking series oh yeah 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 uh for me it was like when i first watched it like when i was younger um <laughs> i uh i liked it but i i always like because like uh, it, it is cool to see it as like tagashi's first thing like first big thing and like you can tell like tagashi really likes dragon ball and he is gonna show you how mm-hmm. much he likes dragon ball and you you there's like parts and I, when I was younger, it's, it's kind of what I just saw it as I'm like, oh, this is like kind of like Dragon Ball, but a little, a little more, a little more gory, a little more like there's some like darker parts that I enjoy. But like it's, it was upon like uh, what I said earlier about the whole like vulnerability thing that that came as I rewatched it when I got older. And like because when I was a kid, I just thought 
Yusuke was so cool because he he was a cool hooligan. Like I, I literally wanted I remember going to school like like probably like fourth, fifth grade after watching Yu Yu show, And I, I tried to act like a cool hooligan like like Yusuke <laughs> because I just thought that was cool. I was like, I'm going to beat him. You're trying to go on the roof. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying and, to. And, and, now, yeah. you, and now you look back and you're like, oh, that's just me being puny. It all makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, and then like watching it again as I was older and realizing that was like this facade he was putting on. It, it, it's so good. Mm-hmm. And I, the villains in that show, especially at the first two, like Tagoro and uh, Sensui are, are so good at that. Where like, like I, I remember like seeing that scene where after the tournament and then uh, you 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 have that scene where Genkai is talking to Tagoro and he's explaining that basically like he didn't chew, he didn't like let himself lose but he wanted to lose. He wanted to be beaten by someone who was so human and lose because mm-hmm. they were human to kind of prove to himself that what he did was wrong to like give up vulnerability. He kind of was hoping that he did the wrong thing and he was proven to that by Yusuke. And I'm like, damn, that's so good. That's so fucking good. That's like, that's where you can start to see like this goaded ass like mangaka that Tagashi is. And same with Sensui, like uh, finding out similar things about him because he was a spirit detective, much like Yusuke. But I feel like Tagoro is like, like it's kind of hard to argue that like the peak of Yu Yu Hakusho is the dark tournament. As good as Chapter Black is, but like for me, I feel like where I kind of started to feel like, okay, like this is kind of like starting to lose it was when it's like basically like, oh, Yusuke, you were a demon the whole time. I was like, ah, oh, OK, OK. Yeah, I th- I think Chapter Black was like the best arc as far as like episode to episode until it was trying to wrap itself up. And then I yeah. feel like he didn't really yeah. have a good idea of how he wanted to end it. For sure. That's and that's like where I'm at with it, too, because I was really like invested for a while, especially when they like basically like when Tagashi like probably just watched like Red Jojo and was like, I'm just going to do those stand battles. And he did for like a little bit in Chapter Black. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is cool. It's like a cool new like way to like change up the fighting. But yeah, definitely like by, by the end, it feels like he just kind of ended it. And it was like, oh, OK. I, I guess, but it, yeah. it had so much potential for sure. The Yusuke falls into the the delinquent subcategory of anime that I have a soft spot for. Moon <laughs> Infinity Four. For, I I, I want to watch Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, a main reason for that is that it's um probably the, the big break for uh, one of my favorite directors, uh, Akiyuki Shinbo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I remember so many fucking episodes of, yeah. of Yu Yu Hakusho. So and went on the, to do like, so much other stuff after that. Yeah, so he's, cool he's like see. almost all the best moments of that show, like the, yeah. the Dark Flame Dragon, like all those like really like when shit looks starts to look really weird and like mm-hmm. like like everything could like break. It's like oh, that's 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 Shimbo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's not the start of his career, but it's like. Uh, it's, his or even his like first proper like yeah it's like yeah it's it's where basically where like people start to be like oh, this guy is like a, a like a name uh, mm-hmm. this, is like, this is someone yeah. to pay attention to yeah you should you should just start watching it because it's like I feel like there's like so little investment in it because like it's so fucking easy just to pick up and then like you will just continue to watch it like it's just so fucking easy to binge and the mm-hmm. dub is like, very good the dub is so good the dub is good <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shout out, it, Justin. It, I Cook. can't. I actually can't. I actually can't watch the sub. Yeah, like because like I, I'm so used to the dub. To me, like Yusuke is Yusuke in the dub because of Justin Cook. Is it Justin Cook? Is that his name? The voice actor. Yeah. Who like? Yeah, I think it's Justin. Cook. Yeah, like I mean, it, in the in the sub, Yusuke is also like that like trash talking character kind, but like the English dub just like it really like revs that up to a, like a whole new level. It's so funny. Yeah, you just you just take the silly accents with the with everything. Else. Oh yeah, Kuwabara too. Yeah, Chris Sabat doing his Kuwabara voice. <laughs> I meant more like a uh, Jin and his fucking Irish accent. Oh yeah, Jin's. Oh my god, the Irish. Oh my god. Yeah, there's a lot of funny you voices just, in there. But in the in the but, in the Japanese version though, Kuwabara is voiced by Shigeru Chiba, who. Uh, that's true. It's mm. true. Who is a? I just, but I've never like. I don't know. I've never committed and been able to watch the entirety of Yu Yu Hakusho sub. Like I can mm. watch like scenes and episodes, but like I'm just so. I guess I'm just so like dub 
fucking brain rotted <laughs> for Yu Yu Hakusho. It's a, I was like, this isn't fucking Kuwabara's voice. This isn't Yusuke. It's a, it's super interesting to read too, cause especially like the earlier, because I think it's only nine volumes. It's a very short manga. But like the first part's like, because uh, you guys remember how, well, have you guys read Yu Yu Hakusho? Yes. Okay. It, no. It's so weird how like, so uh, if you've seen it, there's like the earlier parts are like, Yusuke is like a spirit detective. That's what they call him for like, a few episodes and it just kind of ends that's like a whole like arc in the manga where he's just like being a spirit detective and solving other people's like little issues to kind of like find good karma and stuff and he has like all these little gadgets yeah, I, and shit i fucking hated they took that out of the i mean i understand why because it it kind of moves away from that yeah very early on so just sitting there and establishing that it would kind of make the appeal it would lessen the appeal i guess for some people for sure i mean um, uh, so I, I get it yeah but like those are some of my favorite fucking moments oh yeah for sure i i, I find it weird because like when i talk to other yaku show fans they I, I feel like they tend to not like those earlier parts but i i always love those parts when he's like trying to prove that he is a good person he has to like help people it's like it, it's really cool and uh it, it's kind of um there's another have y'all seen the uh hit shit can a kill hitman reborn no nah, i haven't seen that one do you know what i'm talking about like, no have you heard of it at all yeah i've heard of it oh, okay yeah that anime is so interesting because so what we were just talking about where like in the manga there was like this whole section where like you can tell the mangaka was like trying to do one thing and then realized okay i gotta kind of go more in a shonen battle route that mm. and it's taken out of the anime in hitman reborn it starts, it, it does that and you see it in all the anime. Like Hitman Reborn starts the first 34 episodes being kind of like this episodic comedy, not episode, what well, kind of episodic, episodic comedy slice of life series. And then by episode 35, it just becomes full blown shonen battle. Mm. Kanukamon is a, is another series kind of like that where uh. Uh, this, this is going back, this is going way back to like the late 70s, early 80s when well, like. People will know the, Ultimate Muscle in, in the West. Mm-hmm. Oh, ultimate muscle. Yeah, but, yeah. 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 But it's like, uh, like the, you, you watch the anime and you can kind of see it find its footing in terms of what genre it's supposed to be. Because mm-hmm. at the start, it's just a very like crass gag manga. Yeah. And then they do a tournament arc and they're like, oh, that was, in, that was interesting. That worked pretty well. People like that. Let's do another and another. And it kind of just like stumbles its way into kind of becoming this like archetypal battle shonen that everyone thinks of it at, as being today. When like when it started, it was more or less just like a like a shit post Ultraman parody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would recommend you guys check out uh, Hitman Reborn. I, I think it's a pretty solid shonen series to it's like 200 episodes, I will say. But uh, there are some like there's some really cool shit and like really cool ideas like there's this one villain who's like one of the final villains and his whole power is that he can talk to himself in all the other dimensions and he's trying to basically take over the world in every dimension. So he's like, here's how I took he tells like one other dimension of stuff. Here's how I took over this dimension. Do this, this and this. And they kind of and then like it comes out that like the only dimension that he hasn't taken over is the dimension of our characters and they have to like beat him and it, it, it's it's pretty it's a pretty cool show i actually really like it and i think it deserves a little more love so i i, I would highly recommend it i would highly recommend it, it has a good cast yeah. too like the, the main getting, character uh, cast is really good it's getting a blu-ray here pretty quick oh uh, really uh, yeah 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 discotech is actually uh, doing a uh, blu-ray uh two volumes and it's standard definition on Blu-ray, so each release is a hundred episodes each. So they they are doing the entire series uh, oh, damn. on standard definition on Blu-ray. So mm. and they didn't they couldn't it. get they couldn't get the funding I guess for the full thing to be dubbed, but they did do a dub of like, like, a, like select like episodes. Dub? Oh really? Yeah, I, I think I yes. watched it all. In Special stuff. fan huh. disc is what it's called. Ah, okay. Kind of interesting. I've never yeah. really yeah, seen was, someone yeah, was, do yeah. that before. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's like, oh, we're just going to, we can't dub 200 episodes of this, but here's yeah. three episodes. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool idea. The only, the only um, thing is, um, if you do finish the anime, you do have to still read the manga because it, it isn't, it never finished it completely. Like the story wasn't finished no. with the anime. So it's like 200 episodes, but you still got more manga to read after. But yeah, go, I guess going back to the, the Yu Yu Hakusho, <laughs> show, like it, it reminds me of, um, the first bit actually reminded me of like Great Teacher Onizuka. Oh yeah, like I can see that. I always yeah. think of like you know the the bit with the the girl who's the ghost that's like 
tied to the bench because she's waiting for her boyfriend or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they find out that her boyfriend was just like an asshole and just like went off with some other girl and like left her there. And like, remember she's like trying to balance out like being a good guy and being an, kind of a, you know, outside the lines kind of yeah, delinquent. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so he's like, he's trying to be nice to her, but in like this weird abrasive way. And he's like doing things to like help her out, but like, he yeah, didn't want to like come off is, as soft. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that very, is very Onizuka. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good and connection. Like, yeah. I love I love that arc. I love I like the uh one with the dog and the kid that's like the random fucking uh was it Yu-Gi-Oh that referenced Z that Zumbira thing? Zumbira. Yeah, it was so the kid's like dresses up like Zumbira or something and like the it's like a it's almost like a devil man reference. I oh, think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Yu Gi Oh did do that. Yeah, Yu Gi Oh did do that. Yeah, there, yeah. There's this like a card of like a Yu Yu, Yu Hakusho character. <laughs> <laughs> Yu Gi Oh cards can literally be anything. Like they have like no subset art style or anything. Like you'll have yeah. like anime waifus and then like e H R Giger monstrosities, and they'll just oh, be in this yeah, part yeah, of this yeah, card yeah. game. And I always like that about it. You have a whole archetype based around fucking Gladius. <laughs> And then you have a whole archetype based off sushi. Yeah, the sushi ships. <laughs> yeah, sushi ships. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, the other, also, like, Yu Hakusho's OST is really fucking good, too. That's another thing. Really great soundtrack. The fucking dubbed OPs and endings I fucking love. Even though. Oh, yeah. I, I, I prefer the. Do you guys prefer the, like, dub opening of Smile Bomb or the Japanese? I do. Yeah. Cause like nice too. I, yeah. I, we were going through it, and I was like, I I think it's because they have a guitar, and it's not just synths. Yeah, for like sure. It adds for so sure. much fucking impact to that song. <laughs> it definitely does. It definitely does. No, yeah. yeah. I remember I went to um this uh, this place in uh in uh, Phoenix uh, where I live, uh, and it was called um, the Crescent Ballroom. And there's this band. They're called um, fuck. What are they called? They're like a orchestra almost of these, uh, and they. I want to say they're what are they called? Damn, I don't really remember their name. Uh, Mammoth Eight or something like that. They basically they do covers of video games slash anime music with like a big orchestra, hmm. and uh, they did Smile Bomb, and it was really cool. It was really cool. They also did some like bebop stuff because I feel like you kind of have to do bebop stuff. And there was right. like there was like one point where like they're like they did Wolf's Rain, which was pretty cool. Hmm. And then uh, I remember, like when that happened, there was like a like a, like a weeb behind me. He was like, "Wolf's Rain, <sighs> terrible anime." <laughs> Jesus. And then he was just having a conversation about how like bad it is. <laughs> see, I I actually like Wolf. I don't know. Wolf's Rain is one of those where it's like I can see where people have criticisms of it. I I, I mm -hmm. actually like it probably more than I should. <laughs> and I feel like part of that could be because of the soundtrack, because the soundtrack is oh, so yeah. fucking good. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's probably my favorite Yoko Kano soundtrack. Um that and uh Turn A Gundam. No, nope, oh, Turn A okay. Gundam are probably mm, my two cool. favorites. Um mm. but yeah, Wolf Train's probably probably my favorite anime soundtrack of all time. For a while I oh, would have wow. said probably yeah. uh Ghost of uh, not Ghost of Shell. Um Dot Hack Sign. Um mm. because I like I love Yuki Kajura. Uh, but I I probably listen to Wolf's Rain on its own, like the soundtrack, much more often than I do the Static Side soundtrack now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I'll, you, it's it's funny when people fucking comment shit like that because it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like who yeah, fucking that, cares? That that it no, like that's definitely how like like everyone around the like seating also felt like when they heard that they were, everyone just kind of turned around like okay <laughs> no one fucking cares dude it yeah. reminds me of that fuck, like i always think of like the fucking comment i heard when i went to an anime convention when i was like fuck i would have been 11 i think um and they were talking about fucking gundam and they're like, yeah, mm. Gundam, Gundam characters these days are such little bitches. <laughs> they cry about fucking everything. Like, they had to kill one fucking person. Whereas, like, back in the original Gundam, they just drop a colony. They didn't give a fuck. They were stuck. I like, like, what <laughs> the fuck? I like, 
I like how we're talking about two different people, but they have the same voice because they always have that voice. <laughs> they always have that voice. So it's always the yeah. same guy. <laughs> so it is. The, it's the same guy. He hates Wolf's Rain and he hates Gundam. <laughs> you reach you reach a certain point and you just morph into the same fucking person. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it, it's like you, you you actually sit like I didn't know at the time. I'm like, oh wow, yeah, these people really know Gundam. I don't know Gundam. I never watched Gundam, but these people seem to clearly know what they're talking about. And then that, now I've watched Gundam, and I'm like, that guy didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I, I, like, I, Christ, half the time. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the Gundam, but I want to. It's something I want to go into. But I, I always assumed that like I was going to like it just from like the stuff I've heard about like what they're like those series. And I'm like, I think I will like it. So I'm actually surprised. I don't hear too many. Like most of the time when I hear negative things about Gundam, it's not even negative. It's just someone being like. I don't like mecha anime, mecha anime. That's like the most of the time things I hear. I never heard someone be like Gundam bad. That's actually interesting. Well, this was this would have been like two thousand and two or three. So that was mm. that was a different era, I guess. <laughs> that was like when Gundam <laughs> Wing was on TV and people. You still had like people that were from the tape trading days who would have watched the older mech shows. Mm. When I don't know, that was that was because that guy was like. I was 11. That guy was probably like late teens, early 20s. He he might even been late 20s, honestly. But mm. he was quite a bit older. But yeah, I'll, have you ever thought about getting into older, like like how you would get into older stuff? Because I feel like the way I got into it was from Macross. And I feel like that mm. really helped me get into like older, because of the way it was I, uh... just produced. I've seen, I, um, what's that? Is it Macross Plus, the like short one that Watanabe directed? Is that yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen uh, that. Yeah, I've seen that. Cool. I like that. Yeah, that, that's, that's the only one I've seen as well. It's Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. I do think that there is a jump going from like 90s TV series or 80s OVAs to like 80s TV series or like 70s TV series. Mm-hmm. Mm. Where yeah. It was even for me. Being in an anime as much as I am, like there was a bit of a curve where it's like I had to find a way to like dip my feet in and like get into eighty like older eighties TV series or like seventies TV series like a Gundam like the original Gundam. Yeah, both in terms of like the yeah the way things move, the way things look, and then also like in a similar sense, kind of looking at something like Cowboy Bebop, the way like the the pacing is a lot slower in a lot of these older shows as well. Mm-hmm. Not all of them. I think something like. Um, Future Boy Conan feels like like a modern anime, basically in terms of pacing and structure. But yeah, Conan's there's really like easy stuff to watch. like um, yeah. But then you know, there's, then like on the, on the polar opposite end of that, you have something like Akage no On, which is fifty episodes and very episodic and slow. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if Anne's hard to watch necessarily compared. Like the one I would probably think of might be uh, Rose of Versailles mm. because it's it's very like talky right like it's very much oh like, yeah yeah oh about yeah, like yeah. the interpersonal drama in in this court of uh you know marie antoinette's like court or whatever and so like the drama comes from like this fucking bitch wore my outfit so it's like <laughs> <laughs> like it's it, 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 it you get once you get into it it's like the most fucking suspenseful shit You're like oh how the fuck she gonna handle this bitch wear her outfit <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But like, I, yeah, I, it, it is like a seven, 1978. So it's, but it is Dazaki. So he knows how to fucking. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, knows how to storyboard sure. that shit for sure. But like that, uh, that, that's how I was planning if I was going to like keep, cause I, I do want to keep like going back and watching old stuff. Um, uh, partly because the backgrounds video made me do it already. So maybe want to do it more. And I, I was yeah. just going to follow certain directors like Dazaki and stuff. Like I remember when I was making the video, um, who's the director who's like the goat of 90s anime? He did like Roni Kenshin, Hunter Hunter. Uh, what's oh, his name? Um, he did like You're Under Arrest. Um, yeah. He did um, He did Spy Family recently. He did Spy um, Family recently. Um, like, what's his, his name? name? I'm going to look it up. Hold on. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. it starts it with a K, is, I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, Kazuhiro Furuhashi. That's it. That's it. Kazuhiro Furuhashi. Okay. I remember like... It was so funny to find out that like when I because oh, as I was looking at background artists, I'd see the director name, too. And uh, I remember like at that time, the new Roni Kenshin came out and I always and I'm watching the new Roni Kenshin. I was like, something's like like, yeah, it looks 
newer. It looks shinier, but something's just not like hitting the same. And um, same with Hunter Hunter. I love Hunter Hunter 2011, but I do feel like compared to the 90s one, it is it's not that great in the first like half, like the parts that the new 2011 version did that the 90s version did definitely don't hit as hard for me. And I feel like 2011 only gets really good once it starts doing the stuff the 90s didn't already do, like that whole like Camara Ant arc I thought was done pretty well. Mm. And, uh, and it turns out that like a lot of the stuff I like from the 90s was just like his stuff that he directed. Like, I love that 90s rendition because of the way it's directed and like shot and lit. And same with the original Roni Kenshin. Like, I remember watching a side by side of that and the new one. And it's like his directing just like is like just elevated that original Roni Kenshin run so, so well. And it's like that. That's probably right, what I'm going to yeah. do. I'm going to like hit wa- like watch a bunch of Dazaki stuff and things like that. That's probably going to be For the way. Hashi, yeah. I mean, his fucking work on uh, Trust and Betrayal is like... Oh, he... Trust and Betrayal? Yeah. Uh, speak, uh, Katsu Hiko Fugurashi. He also did... Uh, yeah. He also did uh, the other Lone Samurai 2019. Uh, uh, Dororo. 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 He did Dororo, too, which is like... Part, that was so good. That was such a good choice to have him do also, that after he did Roni Kenshin. Yeah. Also, Spy Family. Yeah, yeah. Spy Family. yeah. And Binshotan. They Binshotan? Yeah, he directed Bin Shotan. Oh, uh. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So for content, yeah, Bin Shotan is, Bin uh, Shotan. you know, think of, you know, he's Kazuhiro Furuhashi directing all these like gritty, you know, Roni Kenshin, Hunter <laughs> Hunter, all directed this. Yeah. It's and good. it's wonderful. It's it's so cute and nice. You got, you love Bin the range. His range as a director. Kind of like how, uh, how, not a director, but Kobayashi, or Shichiro Kobayashi, he would do oh, yeah, yeah. Berserk and Orphan, and then he'll do like fucking what, like uh, Milky Homes, and it all looks yeah. great. It oh all, yeah, 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 works so well. He directed. Uh, also want to watch. Uh, I was thinking he directed Haikata San Go Toru Ga or whatever, uh, which I've it's it's a sh- shojo I've always been interested in, but I want to watch the seventies version. Mm. Um. Mm. Because the seventies version is like a TV series, and it looks really fucking good. Mm. But I it, it ha- doesn't have subs, even though oh. it's got a Blu-ray release and it looks fucking like really good. And I really want to watch it. Um, I, yeah. But the, he he directed the movies here recently that were like done in twenty seventeen. Get Backers looks good. I also want to watch uh, uh, Zipang, Zipang, Japan. Yes, yeah, something like that. I want to watch that, that one too. Oh, he did a uh, unicorn. Cool ass, like Gundam unicorn. Show. Yeah, see, oh, there you cool. go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can watch Gundam Unicorn. There we go. That could be there we go. Your nice. There, there you go. go. That's yeah. my entry. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I'm pretty sure if there's someone that's like really into Gundam, they're just like immediately screeching that I said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, the, I, I also was I, lately. I've been trying to like because uh, my I would say like I'm very blind on. Um, can we? Can you equate? Rom, most rom com anime to shoujo is that is that fair? Uh, uh, I would say it's more shonen, and at least from what I've seen, yeah, at least like, like popular like a lot of crossover. Yeah, because uh, like so you like, think of like uh, is Yatsura. Fruits Basket is Fruits Basket was that was that shoujo? shoujo? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, that's kind of like a. I really want to get into more shoujo series because I, I always think oh, I yeah. would like them a lot, because I like um, Nana counts as one, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, I was, so I was it, gonna ask if, if if you've not seen Nana, you should probably see. Yeah, Nana. That, 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 I I, I've, see I've Nana. read Nana. I've actually wanted to make a, a, another anime fashion video, kind of strictly speaking on uh, who who's the mangaka. It's like not something I their last uh, name Ayazawa. Yeah, I wanted to make a yeah, whole Ayazawa, video yeah. on all her works because they're all super fashionable, and she used to be. Oh, well, yeah, she yeah. wanted to do that, so that's something. But yeah, I've seen Nana, and um, I, well, that's uh, what uh, um. What's that fucking the uh, Paradise Kiss? That's what Paradise Kiss is about. Is a girl who's yeah, in uh, yeah. fashion. Yeah, Paradise Kiss, another one. Um, what's it? What's the other one? I was trying to. Uh, yeah, because I haven't. Oh, another reason was just uh, a lot of the things I love about Berserk, Kentaro Miura got from shoujo series, and I was I like, that. that's cool. Hmm. Yeah, like he he had read shoujo series that helped him kind of build the relationship between Guts and Casca. I was like, oh, that's cool, and I I kind of want to get into more of those. So recently, I was like, okay, I'm gonna like try to watch something that's pretty like popular. I'd always heard about Fruits Basket, so I'm watching that now, 
Uh, but, uh, I'm watching the 2003 version because I'm not sure. Which, I'm going to watch Hell both. Yeah. I'm not sure which one I should watch. Are they both equally good? Are they different? Like, what do you guys uh, know about it? Um, so I've watched both. Uh, I have mm. not finished the 2019 version. I'm like two episodes away from finishing the second season. And I just, I was, that was what I was watching with my ex. So that's been a, like a weird one. <laughs> are they telling uh, like the same it, I, story or are they, how are they? They different? are. So the oh, okay. 2003 version does end differently because oh, okay. he wanted yeah. it to stand on its own. Oh, okay, um, cool. Like if not in like, it's, it's not necessarily that it's like, ended super well and you're gonna be like oh i don't have to watch anymore um mm. but it does like have an ending so if they didn't get greenlit for a second season or whatever it just will at least kind of like not be just hanging on a cliffhanger or something mm. um but for the most part it's it's the same um i would say that it's much better direct oh my god i'm being called on my phone hold on <laughs> <laughs> what the hell hello Hello? Uh, yeah, what's up? It's the guy that uh, was talking trash about Gundam. The guy, the guy who's like really upset that we that we suggested <laughs> you watching Gundam Unicorn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah if you want, we've never, we've never, we've never had a listener call in before. <laughs> um, I guess you gotta go talk about it, and else open. Do we do we just wait or do we keep talking? Like what's the... I, uh, we, we, yeah we just wait because when we when we was like gonna finish his thought so oh, true. in the yeah. in the editing room right. I'll just like clip all this out and then it'll it'll be like it never happened gotcha yeah sorry cool. about that <laughs> all good um but yeah what so watching it there's there's very clearly a, like a, a difference in the level of direction um between the 2003 and the 2019 version for me. Um, like I, I point to, I think it's in the second season. It's not a spoiler or anything, but they go to talk to a character at their house and this character is kind of supposed to be intimidating a little bit unhinged. Um, Mm. but not like overtly, right. It's not like they got like fucking schizophrenia. They're like drawing on their walls. Like, it's just kind of like they, they've had a rough go at stuff and like, they're a little bit, a little bit kind of unhinged, but not like unfunctioning. They go to this person's house in the second season and like they have like a fucking record player playing in the background that's like all warped. And it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, and it's just like, a, like it, it, it's not a scene that's like stands out or anything as like in the context of the show necessarily. It's like a normal scene. They just talk about something and then they leave or whatever. But it's just like that's not how you I don't, that's not really how you fucking like make a scene like this i don't like mm. i just i'm not a i'm a not a fan of uh the 2019 adaptation i like mm. the 2003 adaptation from what i remember of it mind you i've not seen it in quite a while um, okay from what i've seen because i've seen the first season of fruits basket 2019 and i was like this is fine uh, mm. from what i've seen of the 2003 version i definitely prefer the aesthetic of the O3 version. Okay, cool. I, yeah. Uh, I was I think like a big issue for the T like the 2019 version is like how involved the manga is. Mm. Um cuz like she's she I she's basically like an executive producer on it and like Oh, okay, cool. Cuz she she was like, "Oh, I got to correct things." So like it's almost like a George Lucas effect at times where it's like the, tw- the 2003 version, like the character designs are based on like her early stuff, but like the 2019 yeah. version, she's like, oh, it needs to be based on like my better art style, which has basically evolved to be more generic looking. Mm. <laughs> so it, it becomes the meme where it's like soul versus soulless. No, oh, okay. <laughs> I kind of, I had like, I have like a, in terms of like aesthetic like that, I kind of felt that with um, uh, Kino's journey where like, a oh, big yeah. part of yeah. why I like that 2000s version was just like the style was so cool and unique and different for right. that series. And then when you watch the, I think, 2017 version, it just looks like a 2017 anime. And it's like, that's like a yeah, big part of like why the, I like that series. And, and, the, and the new show, it's, 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 it's the, the original Kino uh, Notabe is like very limited in terms of animation, but it makes up for that in spades in terms of yeah. like the overall direction and video v- visual aesthetic of it, including 
inexplicable scan lines. I still don't know why the scan lines are there. (laughs) I kind of feel like a lot of times when like remakes happen or even like when you compare a lot of older and newer anime, I don't know, at least for me, what I've noticed comes up a lot is the like the fact that the director who did the thing back then was like this amazing director. And then like, not that the newer one isn't, but like, it it feels like a lot of times it is the like director who is in charge of the thing that like changes what happens and not changes. Not not that that's kind of obvious, but like, I don't know. I feel like that tends to be like the problem someone always brings up whenever I talk to them about newer versus older anime. Did you guys notice Mm -hmm. that? See, we, we, I think we talked about this, before i don't know if it's a oh, okay. podcast but it's like I, I feel like part of it is like i don't know if it's that they're not cultivating talent the same way as they used to like mm. i don't know if the industry will, has like kind of decided on i like, will say this i will say this before we get called out on it uh the director of uh, the 2017 kino natabi very talented he directed bleach thousand year blood war please do not kill us oh, he's oh, okay, some cool, other cool. stuff too i didn't though. know that <laughs> I was, you know, oh yeah. Uh, yeah he directed akadama drive which looks really good i really liked uh, tunnel of uh, tunnel of the summer the exit of goodbyes but yeah. i don't uh, know yeah, I, just like uh, i definitely wasn't trying to like maybe say like i think that in general no, no, but it's yeah, just something right. uh, it's like a critique that i've constantly noticed comes up when people talk about old versus new anime. Mm-hmm. Well, I think for uh, Kino's case, like it was a problem of like curation. Cause like, Kino is like a lot of vignettes. Mm-hmm. And so they yeah. curated, uh, yeah, Nakamura yeah. who directed the original. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. He curated stories that he thought he could do well. And he thought represent the series a certain way and had the vision of what he wanted to do with it. Whereas the 2017 version was selected by fan polls, basically, by like, oh, oh this really? is a fan favorite. Because uh-huh. uh, K- Kino is like a really popular series in yeah. his, like the yeah. white novels with like kids. So they're basically like kind of gearing it more toward like adapting what people wanted to see as like animated. Um, hmm. So I think that part of it probably was part of the problem of it because it's not necessarily doing the vignette route, it, it kind of was like, oh, this is a fan favorite arc. Uh, or These are fan favorite characters. So we got to show their arc. So that's like half the fucking season is just that character arc. <laughs> um, but we talked about, um, I don't know if like they're not cultivating talent the same way because like how they've kind of shifted the industry. Mm. Um, like, I, again, I'm speaking on my ass on this. This is just like a, a hypothetical example of something that like I just observed, but it's like, I don't know if like the director of fruits basket 2017 or 2019 was selected because like he wasn't a big of a name. And so they're like, Oh, we can have him do what the mangaka says. And like, I don't know if that's like an industry thing where that's what they are kind of pushing their talent into more so than this idea of like auteurs or whatever they were trying to accomplish in the nineties the and two thousands. Mm. Or yeah, well, like Akitaro Daichi literally like it explicitly said that he like wasn't really interested in adhering to the like original manga. He just like he takes with his adaptations, his philosophy is to take some like what he personally is interested in and go with that. And before anyone says the manga was fine with that originally, that there's no beef there. Go watch Hayden's video no. on it. <laughs> um, the only the only case of that ever like happening where there's like tension between the mangaka and the director of the anime adaptation is Ursa Yasura because uh I thought that happened uh, with uh Uzu manga too. Uh I don't know as far as more that's not the case that's like all, like just like a myth with Ozu manga. Mm. Uh but we know for a fact that um with Ursa Yasura and I guess you can kind of see that almost with how the new Ursa Yasura adaptation has panned out uh in terms of being much more faithful to the original manga. Uh, is that Rumiko Takahashi and Mamoru Oshii? Uh, I don't know if they hated each other, but they <laughs> definitely did not get along. Oh, I mean, okay. it is Mamoru Oshii. He seems like he'd be pretty hard to get along with unless you're just like that same <laughs> kind of deranged. <laughs> right, yeah. Going around fucking ta- calling Ghibli the Kremlin and shit. Well, I, well <laughs> I think it also more has to do with like with her seats that Mamoru Oshii just flat out said, he's like, I don't, I don't understand women, so I didn't make it to appeal to women. <laughs> <laughs> The manga is a woman, you fool. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> you see, I don't know. You see that quite a bit with uh, shoujo adaptations, like especially with Dazaki. Because, mm-hmm. like, if you go mm-hmm. look at um, Rosa Versailles and Onisama A, uh, both of those are d- adapted from the same mangaka's source material. Um, mm. Rosa Versailles and, and Onisama are the same mangaka. Um, if you ever go look at the manga, Rosa Versailles is so drastically different. Uh, Onisama A is a bit different, but it's not like super drastic. Like it, it, mm. it didn't change characters fundamentally. Rosa Versailles, like Oscar's a fundamentally different character. Like, <laughs> really? Mm. Well, like in the anime, she's like, you know, the, the stoic kind of um, beautiful fighting girl kind of type. Mm-hmm. Where she's kind of forced into this role and she's like shouldering it begrudgingly and all that. The manga, she's like this bright eyed, starry eyed girl, like doing shit. And like she does still do some of these elements that is in the anime. It's not like the anime is like just completely create like fabricated shit. But like the way that she's presented is just so fucking drastically different. It's like, what did you do to Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my Oscar. It's funny. Uh, uh, I remember, uh, like, and when I was doing the backgrounds video, you know, I was like researching, going into these deep rabbit holes, and it, it, it's it almost felt like um, you guys played the game Journey, right? Oh yeah. You know how, like, in Journey, you could just randomly connect with another player. Mm-hmm. It, it sometimes it, I had moments where, like, I would be doing the research of the backgrounds video, and I'm like, why? I'm trying to find like a way to watch certain shows, and I found I found this ren. I was trying to find a way to watch. Um, God, what's that '60s anime uh, about? It's like it's it's uh it's like one of the it's like a it's in the '60s. It's like a girl, uh, the witch, the witch, Sally the witch, um, Sally the witch. Yeah, I was trying to watch Sally the witch to like look at the backgrounds, and um, I found this YouTube video with barely not too many views, but these dudes kind of watching it and like reacting to it, talking about it, and I, I go to the comment section and I find shaves, and oh, yeah. that that, ha- that, ha- that happened here and there. I'm like, oh, we we were like. It's like we were doing the same thing and we just found each other. Like I found his like like his like mark there that he left. That was a pretty cool thing that uh, came across as I was doing it. I I think I found something from you guys too, somewhere like in one of those like very obscure videos where either you were in the comment section or something. Maybe I can't remember. But Mm -hmm. yeah, like that, 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 that was something that that was pretty funny to come about during that research. It definitely felt like. Yeah, like I was playing Journey and a random player was just there. <laughs> I, I, I happened that happened to me recently. I'm trying to remember what song it was because I will occasionally just put on like the pillows on YouTube and like mm-hmm. it was a pillow song. Oh, is this one? I uh, don't remember what the song is called. It's in Japanese on here, but I was listening to this and like. I was talking or something. I literally looked down and I see fucking Joey in the comments like, man, the rest of the world needs to learn how to make music from these guys. <laughs> 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 fucking 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years ago is odd. Oh, it's awesome. Like, man, That's so funny. Fucking, fucking Joey. Oh, the wow. anime man making the fucking born the wrong generation posts on YouTube. Yeah. What a That's, mood. And he loves the pillows too. That makes so much sense. It's funny. It is oh. funny when you like, you like, I feel I feel like people are we're going to eventually do that in our fucking videos because like we just connect with so many fucking YouTubers and so mm. like Steve and like Kenny and all these people different people will fucking comment on our shit like if some random person just comes across like this four thousand subscriber channel and looks at the comments like what the fuck, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah we've been this has officially Good become boy. easily the longest podcast we've ever done. <laughs> Is that a good yeah. thing? Is that a good? Is that a good thing? Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I got out of this shit. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. We were going to end an hour ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we I, got talking about, about anime, anime again. again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I almost was going to start another conversation because I was going to oh, bring dude, up. Dude, what the 